Welcome to the 258 Studios podcast. How's everybody doing? No one can answer me. Stacy, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Oh my gosh. Um, doing okay. Um, so, uh, I don't think there's anything new on our end that anyone be interested, curious, or... Or that or, we could talk about anyway. That we could talk about anyway. So, um, Sorry, kids. It's a legal thing. So, today, we have Heidi Schnapp. Schnapp. God bless you. <laughs> Snap off. Snap on. I said it right Schnapp before off. and I can't say it right at Schnapp anymore. Off. I love I, Heidi. Don't be mad at me. It's just so hard to pronounce. Yeah, um, I can do it. But anyway, so <laughs> Heidi is, you can say it? Yeah, snap off. Snap. Oh, snap on, snap off. The snapper. Yes. yes. Oh, okay, snap yes. off. Yeah. Snap off. Snap on. That's what she was saying in the beginning of, of the- Oh, I'm an idiot. Snap so um, Heidi is um, a very talented woman from uh, Kingston, Pennsylvania, which is right by here. But um, currently right now, she is the stunt double, stunt double for Jamie Alexander on the hit NBC TV show, Blind Spot. Um, and Stacy and I, uh, strangely enough, got a phone call from Heidi back in, I think, October or November of 2018. Yeah. No, no, well, no. It was October. No. September or October. Oh, Because it think, was cold shooting. Yeah. It was cold shooting. But it, so we, we talked to her before that. Um, so Heidi had this very ambitious idea to shoot, in essence, a feature in roughly five, five and a half days. And um, to our, at the time... Uh, thought of a perilous journey to having it end being a very fulfilling, fulfilling journey. Um, I'm just really happy that we did it. Mm -hmm. So um, I have seen a rough cut. It is very funny. It hits the moments that it's supposed to hit emotionally. Um, and so Heidi was nice enough to come on in and uh, very anxiously uh, do a podcast mm -hmm. with us. And I thought great. she was great. Yeah, she's amazing. She's absolutely great. So um, if anybody gets a chance to uh, watch Blind Spot or when f comes out. I mean, I am db -er too because, I mean, she's been she's on been Blue in Bloods. Like, yeah. I mean, the Blacklist, you name it. She's She's been oh, on I didn't it. talk to her about the Blacklist. No. I mean, like Blue Bloods and stuff. I know. I mean, there's well, so Tom many. Tom Selleck's so mustache. Many good, well, everyone loves lead. Donnie Wahlberg, okay? Wahlbergers. <laughs> um, so, yeah, tune in. Um to this episode please um it, it it's got a lot of uh good info uh we talk about the cd underbelly a little bit um but as far as you know think thinking what you want to do pursuing it knowing that it's what you want to do and continuing to pursue it even, while being even, a good even, example while being a great example mm -hmm. and 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 surpassing what you plan to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Heidi's the full package. Absolutely. So uh, leave a comment, share, like. I don't know how all this internet stuff works, but thank you. And uh, let's get to the intro. So, um, <laughs> hi, <laughs> how you doing? Do we start yet? Who knows? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> this is all very like, eh, whatever. How you doing? Good. Are you good? I'm good. Are you nervous? Mm, yeah. No, Why? no, I'm not like nervous. You're one of the most fearless people I've ever met. Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> like yeah, I just saw like, you well. skateboard through my warehouse <laughs> and I'm like. That's an insurance liability. <laughs> not for me. I bet. <laughs> no. But I'm you not, don't you don't have fear. That's, that's what not I've true. noticed about you. That's not true at all. I, d I have like the right amount of like the right kind of fear. I well, think. I don't see that you're like, you know, I can just walk into Careless. a Walmart and and you know, start throwing shit and I'm okay with that. I don't think you're that. No. You know, that's just ignorant. No, then I would immediately want to pick everything up and put it away neatly. <laughs> Well, that's, that's OCD too. Yeah. You feel, the only thing you're Sorry, afraid of is <laughs> the only thing I'm afraid of is clutter. <laughs> I actually go into Walmart's and reorganize. I actually well, you came and reorganized my office once. I almost yeah. did it again today, but I stopped myself. I, no, I did it this morning because I, I knew oh, you, you might did? be stopping. Did? By. Is that why you I did saw, that? I saw like the bottom shelf. I'm working my way. I'm working my way. We're actually yeah. on. I'm on working nice my way today. That's well because because I have so many strong women in my life. I'm finally starting to be like. Oh, 
I need to act like a like a like a grown adult <laughs> like to pick up after yeah, myself. Yeah, because I look at all because I look at all you guys, and I'm like, man, they got their shit together uh-huh. in some respects, but we're all crazy, or else we wouldn't be in this business. <laughs> Don't let that fool in a, you. In a little, right. In a little bit. The organization of my desk does not indicate the unorganization of my brain. No, but you're... much. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so for those for those who don't know, this is Heidi, and Heidi's a very good friend, and I am not, and I still butcher your last name, so I don't want to... Is it Schnappoff? Schnappoff. Like, That's right. Schnappoff. Like a... Schnapp on, Schnappoff. Yeah, if, if somebody steps on your foot and you're saying off, like, oh, like Schnappoff? You, yeah. My, if you ask where does dad, that come? Where, 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 where does that come from? Like, where's your what's your ancestry? Uh, Stacy got German. me involved in that. Is well, it oh, German? Well, my yeah, yeah. I did the twenty three and me, and it's everything I thought it was, or that I was told, which is kind of not typical. Everyone's like, I'm Egyptian, and I just thought I was Irish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, that's uh, why I'm so good at drawing that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I draw nice triangles. Yeah. Um, no, I. Uh, I really resonated with the fifth element, and I don't know why. <laughs> Keep going, Lilu Dallas. Uh, fifth element. It's a great um, movie. Mm, mm. Uh, so yeah. you're German. Mm, German. <laughs> yeah. Zach was Zach Half was German. so Zach was telling me yesterday about uh, the German version Bell Schnappel or something. It's like their version of Santa Claus, but he comes and steals. Bell. Like I forget the name of it. He said it, and it was just so funny. And he's like, that's totally true. <laughs> but apparently, I've in, heard of Krampus, but that's Krampus. totally it's not outside it. that yeah. man. It's outside Krampus. And we hide so. a pickle on the tree. I think that's a German oh yeah. Thing. I have a, we have a pickle on our Christmas yeah, tree. I have so a pickle. It, like real pickles? No, it's uh, it's like, an ornament. But I, yeah. I'd imagine it might have been. Is that a at German point, tradition? A pickle, and then as time goes on, you start to smell it, and then you eventually find it. I don't know. Is yeah. it just a, it's just a pickle. Is it a wrapped in, it's a German. Thing. Wrapped in. Pale it's all wrapped up in wrapped in in pale from wax, and then you. You walk forward on a tweet. So what do you do yes. for a living, for all those that don't know? Uh, by day, I'm a professional stunt woman. And yeah, wow, that, that's not it. a lot of people know what that is. <laughs> a stunt, stunt woman? Yeah, stunt I mean, they think, they, yeah, but they think like, oh, it's the person that falls and does, but they don't realize. They think it's somebody that like when you're a kid and you get in the hamper and you get on the stairs. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that, what it there's is. There's definitely a difference between a, uh, like a daredevil But there's an art stare. to it. Oh, absolutely. There's an art and there's a, there's a whole, I mean, there's a business to it and there's a, um, more responsibility than most are. Safety. Yeah, safety. There, it's, um. It's not all fun and games. It's not. Everyone's like, "Oh, that's so cool! You must have such a great." I mean, I do. I have. It is cool. It's cool, mm-hmm. and it, it's fun, but it's it's a lot of. Um, but it's not without work. Correct. Yeah. You know, like ninety percent of the work's done not on set. You know, getting getting yourself physically, mentally prepared. Yeah, it's called rehearsing. Yeah, rehearsal, <laughs> or rehearsing, training, and yeah, just staying. Do you up. even? Do you, do you even? I probably it probably a higher number than ninety percent. Probably. And even like when you when you're on set and then that's another ninety percent of you not actually doing the stunt. I mean, you can spend sixteen hours on set and then the last five minutes are like, All right, let's do the stunt, do the stunt. You're putting a harness on, yeah. you're getting jumping off. Dropping like a the building. crab dip mm-hmm. out of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> mouth. Yeah. On, out out your mouth. I can't finish <laughs> or going on? Huh? I don't what know. What's going on? My Tetris syllables are messed up. <laughs> Salibles. Where did you so where did so where did you grow up? I grew up in Kingston. Like you were born in Kingston. I was born in Wilkes-Barre at the General Hospital and then raised in Kingston. Like your whole life? Most of it. Like you, so did you do high school? Did high school, Valley West. Yeah. So what was, what was growing up like? Cause it seems like. What was growing up like? No, it doesn't have uh, to be like, you know, a, the moments from Carrie, if it was like that. <laughs> oh, there were lots of different moments, but, um. Cause like, I, I, cause like, what was the upbringing to like get you? Cause I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying know, to write a story and I'm trying to build my way up to, I have to give context. It's funny. I, I don't even, you know, don't even realize how much your childhood affects that, that small portion, that small percentage of your life years wise affects the rest of your life in some way. I mean, they really are your formative years and they're, they're, um, I keep thinking back on why do I do this? Why do I do that? Oh yeah. From that, like the first, you know, 15, 20 years of my life. And the older you get, you realize how much it, it kind of resurfaces. And I just, now I'm remembering when I was a kid and we would, you know, all of my neighbor friends, most of them were, were guys and they were, you know, we'd wrestle and, you know, we played football and 
Uh, well, we wrestled until their balls dropped, and then, <laughs> and, then I and then I knew how to then win. Then they got stronger. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I did karate and stuff when I was a kid, and I, I think. But was that always something you wanted to do, or were your parents, you know, pushing you, or was no, it? No, no, no. Um, I didn't even know that stunts were like a thing. Or a job. I mean, you watch movies and you don't really think, oh, that's probably somebody else doing that. Well, when well you also when don't think that there's people behind cameras and running right. sound either. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, all, all that. Um, and knowing more about that stuff helps also. Um, but is yeah, there like a moment? Is there like a moment where you're like, I can go back? That might that might not have been where I made my decision, but that was at least the genesis um, or the planting of the seed or planting I rem- of seeds. I remember seeing. Um, a behind the scenes movie, a behind the scenes section on a movie, and it, it was one of the Angelina Jolie like Tomb Raider movies, where oh, a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was obsessed. Was it the um, first one or was this the second one, Cradle of Filth or whatever it was? Cradle, <laughs> uh, Cradle Life. Is that the one in Greece where they? Uh, the second one was bad. Where, where was the wherever they shot? I think it was whatever one was in Greece, and she like starts off with her like diving in the water. I think that's cradle like off the off the wasn't it off a cliff or something Shh, off a yeah and then there were like boats and they were like following her they're like no she can't find the treasure i don't know is it treasure it had nothing i don't, I don't think it had anything <laughs> I, 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 well no the cradle life was like when she was looking for pandora's box right i think was, was the was second one pandora's box I don't one of them had daniel the craig life? <clears throat> this is the one they where both... her, her father was in it her, her legit dad father, played her John Voight. So that was yeah. the first one. Okay. Yeah, the first one. I think it was the. You know what? We're <laughs> spending she, way too much. It time. Kind of IMDb would this by now. The point is, I, <laughs> I think we're spending more time on this than Angelina Jolie did. <laughs> <laughs> just going there. Touché. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, uh, yeah. I just remember seeing a behind the scenes thing where she was like kicking pads, and I was like, oh, I could do that because that's what I that's what I do. And I was getting really frustrated with uh, the acting world. So I went to school for acting and. Um, well, whoa, was whoa, acting. Whoa, we really skipped over. I know. Part you, there. Yeah, about that was stunts, that was so that was skipping the, ahead to that part. <laughs> that was the, that was the oh, evil yeah. can evil jump. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to school for acting. I went to. I mean, when did you get that though? There's a bug for that too. Yeah. So I think I always wanted. My sister did plays. My brother. When I was younger, I wasn't really like at the playhouses down there. Yeah, Music Box Center Playhouse was the first place I did um, any theater. That I. Uh, I tell the story that I had to sneak into my first audition because my my dad wasn't really into me doing plays. He was more about the grades and, you know, wanted me to be a doctor and that didn't really work out. So, (laughs) Um, but I really, I just loved the fact that I could escape and be somebody else and that goes to a But isn't that something, but but he wasn't like, you know, when you're like, I really want to do this, he wasn't like, well, Heidi, it's fucking over. Well, uh, <laughs> well, didn't you play Anne Frank when I was twenty three? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, oh. I was reading about your, oh. your, you know, trying to do some actual. Yeah. She made it that far, here. right? I was so, twenty three. It's no, my, no, my, 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 yeah. my point being is that, like, when I was when I was younger, I mean, your parents always have like doctor, lawyer, you know, and in a distant land astronaut, and then eventually my parents were like, "Look, we think you're going to be a failure, so whatever makes you <laughs> whatever happy, you want to, yeah." No, no, my, I mean, my dad was like, as long as you, you pay for it, like he, they couldn't really, a lot of people, you know, the parents can't really help them financially. My, well, I think it's a very, but I also think it's a very strange road to go down. What? Uh, the arts in the, general? Yeah, the arts and the entertainment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because people do just do? don't get it. Yeah, I want to do that thing that you don't ever make money. You know. But the strange thing is, is that every everybody, even even the parents were like, don't go down that road. They have favorite movies. They have favorite of TV course. shows. They have of course. favorite artists. They yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't be any joy in their life if they I didn't. I mean, it, anything you focus on, and in, in, in this is, you know, I might be jumping, I, I jump around, but uh, anything you focus on, if you put the right amount of energy and effort into anything, you're going to be successful. I mean, I I think. I haven't, it hasn't proven me. Well, you're at least going to figure out how to do it. Well, yeah, and you'll find another path, you know, path, not path <clears throat> of least resistance, but, you know, what seems to work for you if you keep trying so how <laughs> how young how young were you when you were doing plays? Um, I wasn't. Uh, like at least I said, when you I wasn't were like the allowed bug. to until I was fourteen, maybe fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. That seems I think like it was a 14. decent age though to to get into that. high school, like my first year in high school. But before that, I would do like you would fight Mike. I, I would I would fight my sins. I would fight 
like my my friends and I didn't even know it at the I time. You were kill my parents. No, no. I, I like, would right, like get on your knees. I'm gonna kick you in the face. It's gonna be good. I would set up like <laughs> legit fight scenes or like where well, you would we choreograph would, scenes. I would choreograph scenes and like at like 13, 12? Like eight or nine. Because really? I started martial arts when I was six and um six? Yeah, like five or six. I I my my dad had my brother teach me. My brother was a karate dude. What? I don't know if that uh, was their name. Is that dude. like my brother. And eventually you'll work your way to karate dude. Karate dude. I don't know. <laughs> it's after the black he, belt. He was a brown belt and he taught me. He, he did Goshen Jitsu and he studied in Swordsville with somebody. I can't remember. Um, well, I'm not plugging them. <laughs> oh, they, I don't think they're even there anymore. But um, Now I want to plug them. But uh, you want to plug them? Like, anyway. No, I want to. It's, you know what? It's so, podcast talk for promote. Promote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I Just I like swag is not what I thought it was. <laughs> That swag. Um, but my brother gave me like, a, my, I think my dad just wanted to make sure I was going to be like into it before he, you know, paid for karate classes for me. And um, yeah, I started that super young. And then I started choreographing fights with my friends with like the like same dudes I would play football with. But was that something where you're like, oh, I like this? Yeah. And not only that, like I would. <laughs> choreograph things where we would fall down the stairs like i would you know either punch someone or shoot someone and like get shot uh, and like fall down the stairs so i'm sure when you went over other parents house they were like <laughs> oh shit we were never inside though that's the thing we we're always i on, mean on other people's mm-hmm. property yeah the upstairs. neighbor that was a thing the neighbor across the street she, she would it, every like movie you've ever seen where the neighbor comes out and shakes a broom that yeah. was that was her <laughs> she go i'm gonna call the cops no fighting and i'm like I'm like, come on, lady. Look, I'm going. winning, first of all. <laughs> That's the thing. I always win. Even if I got shot and fell down the stairs, somehow I'd crawl up and stab him in the heart before. So <laughs> then you get into theater at like 14. Yeah. And was that like, I mean, that's one of those things where like, I want to do it, but I really don't know what it's like yeah. to do it. Yeah, I just knew that it, 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 the idea, and I listened to some musicals and I've seen plays and, I think the, the idea of becoming somebody else, like I always, when I was younger, I used to make up stories all the time. Like, Oh, so you're a liar. Yeah, my dad oh, okay. would call it bullshitting. And I just want to see what people would, sometimes people, or, or even now, like my mom or my dad or, you know, friends would say, you know, oh, I wonder how this happens. And I'm like, oh, I'll tell you. And then I come up with a big elaborate explanation yeah. of how something works or yeah. whatever. And like, oh, that makes sense. Is that, Really? Yeah. No, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, you just got to lie with sounds confidence. Sounds good, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I would make up big elaborate stories knowing full well that it wasn't true. But not like a, I don't want to say like, I, I, if someone would say, writing. is that true? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I love doing that. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I just like the idea of just to like live in, in someone else's shoe or walk in someone else's shoes and live the life of someone else for a little while. Is that because uh, life away. is, it's exhausting being around yourself all the time? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I always Anytime thought that. I'm like, that? I can't listen to, I'm like this person is with me time. all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my subconscious is like, you should eat that Domino's. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you're a terrible person. You yeah, know. right? But I always, felt, I always felt trapped because you have an inner dialogue with yourself. You can talk mm-hmm. to yourself. And I always thought that that was like, the, I don't get a break from the, from the personality that is me. Yeah. And I, well, also I, I mean, when you're younger, you still haven't crazy, but well, you still, I mean, until I guess my dad's a psychologist, so I've learned all these oh, things. Oh, you're screwed. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. That's why I'm so messed up. No, hey, tell um, me about oh, your mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's another, I, I love my mom. No, I love, I love both my parents, but, uh, you know, your personality doesn't really even set in until you're, like 13, 14, 18 or, I thought it was 18 13, or 19, 14. you think you're locked into your character, maybe yeah. personality younger. But uh, yeah, you're still kind of figuring it out. So I was testing out personalities, I guess. But um, <laughs> That but, seems like a really interesting, like, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. I just think there are a lot of other things too. I had a lot of, I had a lot of dark thoughts as a kid. I still do. I mean, I walk down the street and I see things and I wonder, as I probably shouldn't say this, but theoretically, like if I need, if someone were to attack me, if I were to grab something, break it and like, I don't know. I'm always thinking of I, how I, to use found well, objects to protect I, myself. As far as I know, in every <laughs> self-defense class, that's what they tell you to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good I for mean, uh, my job now, so that's good. 
<laughs> but, the, but that also allows you, that also gives you the opportunity. It's, it's, just, it's just like a photographer walking outside going like, oh, if I had my camera, I'd do this. If I had my yeah. camera, I'd do that. Mm-hmm. You're just figuring out there might be a fight True. scene in the future where you're like, I was walking down the alley, which makes this whole stunt believable. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And I think I've had to frame it because now I'm thinking like a photographer and a yes. martial artist. So yes. it's so, pretty awesome. So don't think you're crazy. <laughs> um, it took me a long time to realize I'm so not. when so did you decided to go to college and, and when you decided to go to did you decide you went to college yeah right? I I had someone I I got I got a an invitation to go to Wilkes they just started like a BFA musical theater program the year prior and someone saw me in a play in high school and was like come to Wilkes we'll give you all this money and I was like well I kind of wanted to go to New York and just get out of here and pursue it but free college, let's try that. Or very, very close to it. I'm sure mom and dad were. Yeah, well, they're like, well, idea. if you're going to do it, you might as well just test it out here. Yeah. You can live with us. And um, But I did, I went to Wilkes for a year, and I feel like I outgrew it by October. And See, I did that too before I went to school. I went to Wilkes for one semester to see if I could still do it. Yeah. And I, I and literally by October, I'm like, I don't want to. I'm doing well. I know I'm not stupid. I know it was just me being an asshole in high school. I know yeah. I can do this. Yeah, I, I definitely felt the urge to, I think I just needed to get out of my hometown, to be honest, and, and pursue something. A lot something. of people don't realize that that's a really good thing. You did it that. It is. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. I didn't I didn't well, you, think you, I'm you leaving and never country. coming back, but. Oh, yeah. <coughs> You're like, New York's not far enough. Keep going. <laughs> I don't like yes. New York. <laughs> <laughs> I need an ocean between. I don't like it. <laughs> you know what it is? It's just It's just a bunch of poor people. I don't want to <laughs> live there with them. I'd rather go somewhere more no. bougie. Bougie. Um, I want what, them what, to talk but, different. But were you, I mean, a lot of people think that that's a scary move. A lot of people think that like leaving my comfort zone to pursue what I think I want to do uh, but is there, terrifying. And then you get there and you're like, oh, it's not that bad. There is no mm-hmm. doubt in my mind that that was at the time. I mean, even now looking back, there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to pursue it. Um, there's nothing else I... I really was passionate about that. I loved enough to sacrifice and to do all the hard work necessary to succeed. And that, I mean, at, that's what I thought at the time. And that's what I, my heart was really in, in too. Um, but you know, as you pursue things in general in life, you kind of realize that your dreams and your path can shift and that's okay. That's the, I think that's like the one thing that when I was younger, they don't really tell you that. The, the, They're your, like, your follow your dreams, fluid. but stick to that one dream and don't veer off the path. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, your your dreams, you know, that's Maybe why the dreams. Dude, you're just firing an arrow in a general direction. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? And and So where was in the music thing where you're like, oh, this is bullshit. This in is music? not what I want. Yeah, because you went down there for music in the scholarship. Uh for musical theater. Um yeah, I, I think I just kind of like I felt kind of like a big fish in a small pond in a way, which was, it's, it's very kind of, it's good for your confidence. I think when, especially when you're first entering the field or you're studying it or going to school for it. But what, what would be the thing that makes you think that? And this is not a, this is not a gotcha. No, it's, it's not. It, it, like, did you I feel destined for something better? Like I needed more. I felt like, okay, I got that. Now what? You know, it wasn't even, uh, talent thing or, or, or your your bet I, I, that's totally you know um, yeah but I've seen you subjective. start something and then you have to consume it like it's like yeah. if you start something you're like I need to know like what the, everything I need how to how to know everything to get through this right yeah that that's very true um I'm very much a sponge in that way and yeah. I feel like um I just want the I just want to at least get an idea of the full picture and I feel like I couldn't do that there I couldn't get what I wanted out of it and I wanted to learn more. No fault of Wilkes. Uh, no, not at all. And that's not to say that that's not an amazing program. And it's it's been you know evolving over time. And it was only their second year. But me personally, and what I wanted to get out of it, I kind of wanted more things than musical theater, to be honest. Because even just you know projects I'm working on now, I'm like, well, what's that? Oh, what's that? And it's just it takes you down different avenues. And they were very good at what they were doing, but I wanted to know more, and I just couldn't get the information there. So how long did you last? Bored. Uh, well, I lasted the year <coughs> at Wilkes. Like two semesters? Two semesters. I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say I stuck out the year. I, I made some great friends and I learned, I did learn as much as I could. Um, I did learn a lot, but I wanted to learn other things. So um, after the first year, um, I, well, after the first like semester, I 
I applied to transfer to NYU. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And then I, I always wanted to go to NYU. I had like a backpack in eighth grade with, uh, in, in, uh, what's it called? Whiteout. I put NYU and like NYU <laughs> on my backpack in eighth grade or some. I didn't even. I, and all I the think, teachers are like, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder what that stands for. No. Um, she would have been better putting N-A-S-A. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Because she's out of this world. Is that why? Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Totally it works on a space. lot of levels. Yeah. It works on a lot <laughs> of levels. Spaced out. Space yeah. Force. Space, oh, my God. So anyway, so you get, so, you, so you're like, I, I, you apply to NYU. Uh, yeah. So I, well, I applied early decision when I was in high school as well. I, uh, am I probably the first person to get their money back from the SAT prep course because my SAT scores actually went down when I retook them. I had a horrible, I'm a horrible <laughs> test taker. Me too. I just was <laughs> not even considered, not even considered, uh, at NYU the first time around, but I did, because I went to Wilkes, I got you know, my first semester I got 4.0 and everything because I took classes that I did, like taking college courses. That you and, know you want to take. Well, yeah, the subjects that you know you want to take and, you know, English and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I got a 4.0. E, like that academic part was set to transfer. Um, and then I auditioned. Um, there, It's a conservatory program. Um, very hard to get into as a transfer, it turns out. They had 3,900 students apply and they took 39. So it was a pretty cool. Was it one out of a hundred? That's that's about right. Yeah, I mean wow. it is right. <laughs> Thirty nine. Thirty nine hundred. Um, but it, it, that was pretty cool to to be accepted. Like, well, now I have to go. I have to figure out this money thing. Um, oh no! And so we did all that like FAFSA. Oh yeah. Student loan I hated stuff. that stuff. <laughs> yeah, had to have no like, one likes it. Cosign yeah. loans mm-hmm. and proctology exams. But uh, you know, years. I was <laughs> like, no, nah, it's cool. I'll just I'll just like work right when I get out of college. I'll get like famous and shit real quick. Yeah, six months, man. You got six months. Yeah, to pay it yeah. Off I got a nice start, grade. Like, I'm gonna paying. even need the grace period. Please, I'm gonna have a job graduation. <laughs> you know, like I didn't really, honestly, I didn't even think about. Well, a lot of us think optimistic. Yeah, right. But what yeah. was in our water? Because I totally had that same mentality. Well, yeah, that. <laughs> And like you, Coal. no one ever <laughs> at NYU. They're like, we'll help you get through the financial oh, stuff, placement? and oh. you know, you'll be great. And then you'll they love don't it here. Care. No, well, yeah. they they care enough to call me once a month and ask for her money. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you advice on that after this. <laughs> okay. Well, I said, yeah, I usually say something to the effect of, once I'm done paying you back, then we'll talk. So but, what, you, did you do four years at NYU? So I did three, three years there. <clears throat> and what, what was your degree in though? Uh, I got it. I realized I was spending so much money on school and I saw, I thought uh, if I'm going to be here, I should probably get the most out of this as I can take as many credits as I can before I go over. And I, th- I think, yeah, it was something like 21. You can take up to 21 credit. Like, it's kind of unheard of. Usually especially, it's 12, right? Uh, I think it's like 16 yeah, per it's semester. Like 16, Is it? 16, 16, 16 to 18. 18. Mm-hmm. So I only yeah. talk to the lazy people. That's who I talk <laughs> but, to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it also depends on your degree and like what your credits go toward. Anyway, I I found, well, my degree, I think technically is drama, um, which is conservatory three days a week, liberal arts two days a week, um, which is it's, it's a heavy load. But it's, again, it's, some, it's like you pick your classes and you can decide what you want to study and working hard for something that you love is so much easier. Well, it's not easier, work. but it's, mm-hmm. yeah, you well, it, it, yeah, it's work, but it's, but it's fun it's, too. It's, yeah, yeah. It's stuff you want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I say every day, I'm, I have a lot of work to do, but it's uh, happily and gladly. What do I tell I, a bad day doing this is better than a good day doing something else. Yep. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So then you get, so then what, like, what, did you work on projects in the, in the time there where you're making connections? Like how does, how does that work? Jesus. Okay. So <clears throat> I also was, you know, trying to pay for food and, and rent and things. Uh, eventually I think I, I did like the housing for NYU the first year and then got an apartment. So, I mean, I'm still working while I'm going to school while I'm trying to do this. Taking 20 some. Taking 21 credits, 21.5, I believe, one semester, and uh, got also a degree in arts and public policy because I figured out that all of the liberal arts classes I was taking, I I had a really great advisor. There's also a funny story about that, which I'll get to in two seconds. So 
took all my other classes so that it kind of linked up so I could have two degrees. I don't, I still, if someone ever listens to this and knows what I can do with a degree in arts and public policy, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> um, I'd imagine something having to do with arts and public policy. policy. Yeah. yeah. But I'm right. um, not really mm-hmm. sure what I can do with that, but I have it just in case. Um, in is case that like I the National Endowment of the Arts? With that, that, there, there's like you're prepping for one job. It's the only job you can ever have, and there's a vacancy every 75 years. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, I got this one. Or, or it's just a very vague title so that you can do anything. In yeah. It. it has to do with those I can words. run this bank. Yeah. <laughs> it's public. That's in my degree. Yeah, I know how to deal with people. <laughs> yeah. So what did your advisor say? So she helped me... Um, just make sure that I got the credits in so that I could graduate with both uh, degrees. And right before I graduated, I got called into a room at NYU. Like we're talking May of my senior year of paying all this freaking money. And uh, I walk into the room and it's literally every, de- uh, all the department heads, my advisor, the guy who's like in charge of me, you know, walking out the door with a, with a diploma Everyone's super serious looking. And How many like, people are in this room? Like eight people. And it's... Like, it's, were you blindsided? You didn't know you were coming in? I this? didn't know. I thought I was just meeting with my advisor. And it was it was like in a little like conference room or maybe it was in her office. It was a big office. It's a little foggy. But I walked in and the the clearest, the, the part that it remains clear to me is she tells me I don't have enough credits to graduate. And she was saying how something with like my English and she messed up and fix it. And uh, yeah. And I'm like, so, oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking in my head, I can't afford even summer school. I can't, yeah. I don't know how I'm, I, I have to apply for more FAFSAs. I don't know. What do yeah. I do? And um, so I'm starting to like sweat a little bit. And then I see one of the, the dudes kind of <laughs> start laughing and just, and they all start laughing. It's and NYU. Like, no, we're just fucking with you. You're good. I mean, you are short, like eight credits, but we're gonna let you go. <laughs> so what did you? So, you so what was your first degree in? Drama. And your second one was Arts art and public, and public, public policy. Yeah. I don't know what so that it's means. It's very official sounding. It does sound <laughs> official, doesn't it? Yes. That's but. like a, a Footlocker for aquariums. I don't know what that. Uh, what? Shut up! I hear what I want to hear. I say what I want to say. So then you get out of NYU. <laughs> <laughs> what Back to you, Heidi. But I don't know how NYU works because Full Sail is basically a tech school. And NYU is, you know, it's like the East Coast, USC, UCLA. I mean, if yeah, you're going I- go to go to some school that has to do with film or, or, or performing or whatever, like either that or Tisch. Yeah, Tisch. Well, it was Tisch School of the Arts. That, that yeah. was my, my school. Oh, that NYU owns that? NYU mm-hmm. Tisch School well, of the Arts. So that's, yep. that's um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's NYU's the general, then Tisch is the School of the Arts, and then I was in the drama department of Tisch, and then of the drama department, when you first start in drama, you have to have two years in a primary studio. So there are a bunch of, when I was there, the acting studios were Meisner, Strasberg, Adler, Cap 21, which is a musical theater, um, Playwrights Horizon, which included directing and producing and which I realized I wanted to go there a little bit too late. Um, but I think I got into cap 21 when I auditioned cause I auditioned with a song. I'm like, cause I was in musical was the theater. Song? Um, not for the life for the, yeah, n- not for the life of me from thoroughly modern Millie. Who? who? Thir- thoroughly, thoroughly modern Millie Sutton Foster musical. That was a song. Was I do like a, Sutton Foster, Netflix? though. I do like Sutton Foster. <laughs> Younger is like my favorite TV show. Oh, my God. Now. And then I, 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 okay, so I saw her and somebody told me that I looked like this girl, Sutton Foster, or they, that I reminded them of her, which is, um, or she reminded them of me. Yeah, she is older. Whatever. She's yeah. older than us. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, reminded them of her. Whatever. <laughs> we're We're similar. We're similar. So I saw her on the Tony Awards and I was like, I have to see this show. And I ended up like meeting her at the stage door. I never like did the stage door thing before. And she was like, you should. I was like, speech. I, I like tears ran down my face and I couldn't say oh, anything. Oh, do you get like that to certain people? I did, I, this is the first time it had ever happened. Really? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, I'll, I'll, I had my playbill. I'm like, I'm just going to tell her that she was awesome because that was so good. And it like, I could totally do that. You know, I want to 
be that person someday. And, and it came yeah, out like you were on a bumpy road. I was with. <laughs> <so awesome. laughs> no, actually, it came out like this. Oh, Heidi. Uh-huh. And she thought, I think she thought I was special, which. <laughs> well, you are. Is that, yes. is that, I don't know if that's, if I, I'm allowed to say that. But anyway, um, I was waiting and I had my playbill in my hand because I just saw the show and it was winter and I didn't have a, per- I remember um, being there and just not being able to speak. And she I said, mean, do you, you want me to sign like- your, and I had it, I just had it in my <clears throat> hand and then I was like holding it to me because I didn't want her to, I, I didn't want it. Just be like, sign my playbill. Because right. I, see, I see people do that. I'm like, it's so dumb. Well, because you but respected her. I did. And I was yeah. waiting till the end to just be like, I really respected your performance. I'm going, I, I hope, you know, this has inspired me to, um, you know, get out of my hometown and actually, you know, pursue my dreams and whatever. And uh, yeah, so I was just, I couldn't talk. I was, you know, catatonic for a good <laughs> 60 seconds really and that's an eternity and i think yes. yeah it's, yeah so this is what happened so i'm standing there and i'm holding my playbill and she's like do you want me to sign your playbill and i kind of was just like looking at it like th- this is playbill and I, like i looked down <laughs> and then she like kind of like slowly reached out and grabbed it and then she signed it and she's like so super sweet and then gave it back to me and i just nodded my head as she walked by my friend was with me and she's like what the hell i'm like i don't even know <laughs> what just happened really and then the next night we went to see urine town her brother hunter foster was in urine town went back to the stage door after i'm like we have to go back because i can't leave it like that so yeah. we went back the next that family night. knows who i am now <laughs> and we <laughs> well as soon as we got out of here in town, I was like, we're hightailing it back. We ran back to the Millie stage door. I waited and I waited at the end and I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to tell her this time. I'm not whatever. And um, right at behind us were uh, Hunter and his Jennifer Cody. I think his wife, I think they were married at the time, but um, the brother. we're walking and I know he's behind me. So I'm like, all right, well, at least we're going like, In the right she's, she's going to be there if he's going that way because right. it seems like they're kind of following us exa- like right to the stage door and they were and they were right behind me and uh, I, I waited at the end of the line of people waiting to get their playbill signed and she came out and I didn't I didn't have a playbill this time in my hand so I didn't have anything to you know hide behind hide behind or have her <laughs> grab again and whatever so she came out and um, right they went to the, she went to the last person before me and then Hunter was like, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay. I was going to say something and she's like, well, hold on. And then she turned to me and she's like, hey, do you have a playbill? Or, and I'm like, I was here last night and I all I just wanted to do was to tell you that I thought you were ready. Blah, 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 blah. And I started like rattling off everything I wanted to say and then I like ended up like, <sighs> and then I was like, okay, you can go. You know, like I just wanted to get it out because I was, you know, mortified that I just froze and couldn't say anything and like a single tear dropped from my from my eye. And um Aww. Yeah, it was very sweet. Did you but hear music? That sounds like a music moment. It was. I, I mean I always hear music. That's a problem. Who was the was it the Indian guy? But, okay, but <laughs> remember the ad in like the eighties where it was like he shouldn't litter? And it was an Indian guy. Like this moment right one now. Tier. We were just having a moment. Isn't that like the no, Indian No, it was guy? emotional. I remember from being a kid, it was a single tear. It was emotional. And they kind of make fun of it years to come. But I thought it was. I don't remember that at all. all. Right, I didn't mean to ruin your. I, I, my intention wasn't to ruin your story. I'm just. Oh. I'm sorry. It it's was like, really beautiful. And that's so what I wanted anyway. to relate it to well, something. I'm only really kidding. <laughs> I but- hate you. <laughs> You're my worst Indian friend. Guy. I love you too. Worst and best. Yes. So when you get, so. Wait, so, oh yeah, so what? Huh? <clears throat> I remembered where the pause button was on our story. Okay, I do too. Okay, good. So told her all that stuff. Her brother was like, let's go. And she's like, wait a minute, again, after I told her like all of my deepest, darkest secret, not secrets, but whatever I wanted to fandom. tell her the name of my, my fandom. Your deepest, I was like, try, I was trying to be cool. I yeah. was so not cool, but yeah. I was trying to be cool. I'll do in your my hair, head, I'll wash your back. It was so cool in my head. Like yeah. I was so cool, and I'm pretty sure that's not what happened. But I did say something, and yeah. it was to the effect of, you know, I want to get out of my hometown and pursue blah blah blah. And you're an inspiration. And okay, good night. And he was like, let's go. And she's like, wait. And she's like, you know what? I want to know what happens with your career and with your life here. And she she you know wrote 
something down. She's like, yeah, piece of paper. She's like, cause she had a marker from signing stuff. So I like, I grabbed my urine town playbill and she <laughs> wrote the, the address. She's like, this is the address of the theater. Um, just write me a letter and I'll write you back. And I want to, no I just want to know what you're, you know, what you're up to and everything. And I was like, okay. So I, uh, I did write her and I was like, you know, I got into NYU, blah, 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 not expecting anything, but I thought I'm going to send it off and at least like, you know, the beast, some sort of like cathartic catharsis of just, you know, completing yeah. this circle. And then she wrote me back and then I wrote her back and then she wrote me back and like handwritten on a yellow legal pad. And you I, were her. Her. Yeah. And which is the coolest, I yeah. think. Yeah, and I framed sure. my first letter from her. And the second one, I just still have in the envelope and um, saw her uh, in a show. I, I mean, I went to NYU, so I had no money and no time. So when I did see a show, it was because either someone gave me a ticket or because I, you know, did like standing room or whatever. Um, but if you're an artist and you want to see a show, you, you'll see a show, you'll figure it out. Um, but I, I saw her at the stage door and she broke through the crowd and pointed, Heidi, like my name, everything we talked about, like recalled, like instantly was the, it was like the coolest feeling. And as the years went by, like we would, we would talk more and I would, uh, I would go see her in a show and again she would like break through a crowd to see me and said my name and it's just it's very nice and it's very thoughtful sure. it's yeah, not that's awesome you know to go out of your way to 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 make that connection I think it's really sweet and that's something that I remember too and that I try to do not that I'm at all like famous or anything but if there's someone that's Infamous. reaching out mm -hmm. yeah but if there's someone like it doesn't matter what your career is if someone's aspiring to do or go along a similar path and whatever just to be encouraging how much that meant to me and how that was kind of like a little like reboost. Like I was maybe feeling like a little low on energy and it was like, you know, a refill fill of energy, like in video game or something, you know, well, they always tell you, they always tell you not to eat, meet your heroes. How, how was that? Um, I don't know. Did they say, is that a real thing? Well, yeah. Cause yeah. they always disappoint you. Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. yeah. And well, it seems like you got something really awesome out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't get to, I wasn't disappointed. And it's, and I'm not like a Broadway, like I obviously didn't go that direction immediately. I, I wanted to do, that was a great thing about going to NYU. I could go and I wanted to learn more about cameras and I wanted to learn other things. And I loved acting and I learned all different aspects of it. And I ended up doing that when I got out of college for a while too, directing and acting and all that kind of stuff. But just, you know, to finish out the Sutton Foster story, eventually, um, I, I had the opportunity to be her stunt double later on, which is That's hilarious. So, cool. so, you know, totally. Wait, came was she circle. surprised when you walked on set? Well, I think the first time I, I, I let her know that I was doing it and she was totally stoked. And then, yeah, she was like telling everybody in hair and makeup. She's like, this girl, I saw her at the stage door, you know, 17 years ago. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm crazy that's awesome i know that's so, so cool i'm so glad yeah. i like her on that show yeah and <laughs> it's it's really nice when you like someone because you think they're kind of like the characters they yes. play and stuff like so that she is like her character and just that like just, it doesn't uh, always happen but yeah she's the the best <laughs> she's the best and so, to this day like we now we're connected and so what was what was the path diploma now what oh <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. does everyone's career after graduation start with, oh. Um, I didn't go to my own graduation, actually. I didn't go to- fuck them. I didn't go, well, the big <laughs> one is like, they just scroll your name, you know? No. And then, uh, well, Well, NYU, the video kids need something to do. The film kids need something to do. <laughs> at Tish, I think at Tish, they'll, they'll you know, they do they your name. They don't do caps and gowns and shit? Yeah, yeah, totally. But I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that and spend, my parents, my dad would have no interest in just coming to the city and sitting in a stadium and watching my name get scrolled up on a screen. And <clears throat> I don't know, I wasn't really into it either. I was working a lot. I worked 20,000 different jobs. I have, uh, what were some of the worst <laughs> jobs that you had to do while yeah. you were doing that? Oh my gosh. Um, I sold just to, just comedy to make tickets, through. comedy tickets in times square, you know, do you like to laugh? You know, one of those guys <laughs> that was just the worst. Cause I didn't think they were worth $20. But, um, <laughs> Stacy's headphones just hit the microphone. Sorry. It was just really funny. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know who these people are. They're like, Jerry Seinfeld got his start here. I don't know this guy, but <laughs> <laughs> go touch the bricks that Jerry Seinfeld leaned on one time. Um, 
But yeah, that's how you was, advertise in New York, yeah. apparently, when you want to do the small clubs. Yeah, I guess. How much did you get per ticket? Uh, by the way, they still owe me from the last week I worked, which is you get 10 for every $20 ticket. I threw five or 10 for every $20 ticket. You get $5. Yeah. And then they give you like, I don't really, re- it was not much at all. Like people that were good at selling them made enough to like pay their rent. I could barely buy my lunch for you just the month. really weren't good at selling. <laughs> like mm-hmm. one lunch a month. I just really, I wasn't. And I had a friend who, who got me the job who was very good at it. Tiffany, Tiffany Smith was very good at it. Well, she had a handgun. That's how. She had a handgun. <laughs> Give me $20. Yeah. Here's this ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone walks away. So know. when you got out, what did, what what, so, what did well, you do? Because okay, so there's that, weird I, paths for people who like to go to do this stuff like this. I, you know, you're told you, you have to audition. I had a, I, I don't know if I should, and I'm not going to say the name, but I had a, I had acquired a, a commercial agent. I was freelancing with them. I wasn't signed right. or anything um, <clears throat> with like a reputable agency. Um, I definitely had my share of Me Too moments. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, like everybody. What year is this, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Years. er, Early 2000s. So you'd walk in and somebody would be a scumbag? Well, not only that, the agent that I had took me to a play. Was a scumbag? Took me to a play. uh, Just for, like, for instance, like a very, one of many other, one of many stories. um, Took me to a play and I, at intermission of this he was like, oh, I have this, t-. you know, it's like a, I thought it was like a networking, working thing that people do. And he seemed nice. I was somewhat naive, um, yeah. but going to NYU definitely helped that and just working and living on your own, on my own in, in New York. Uh, you learn how to identify bad, bad situations. Mm-hmm. Bad, yeah. Or quickly. Yeah, well, after, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> well, you go through things and you're like, oh, well, that's that, that you, you can't just assume people are nice just because they smile and they say they're nice people. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, he's like, oh, uh, I was talking to him and he just gave, gave me this ticket and he, I didn't think anything of it, took me to the show. <clears throat> At intermission, I, I said I had to use the ladies' room and uh, I, I guess like there was a tampon in my purse and I kind of pulled it out of the purse to go. To the restroom to put to it in. To soak up your drink. To soak up my drink. <laughs> that you spilled. And I was like, you know, well, I'm not like embarrassed that I get my period every month because that it's a thing that happens. Everywhere I look. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everywhere. No. They all have um, one. So he, That's what makes women superior. Just that alone. Men could never. We can't handle a cold. Do you think we can handle that? That's nope. true. That's yep. true. Yeah. Now when I, I look at my wife and I'm just like, oh, I'm so, I would never. Well, I now wouldn't make, I wouldn't make it. I would have made it past my first one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'd have been dying. Like, Get him, gone. I'm dying. It's yeah, over. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, guys, you're going Goodbye, cruel world. That's normal. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's Suck not. Suck it up, Buttercup. What do they say? <laughs> something. You always got to be careful of something that bleeds for seven days. It doesn't, doesn't die. die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so true. Yeah, <laughs> and I understand. I understand now. It's healthy. It's supposed to happen. Yeah, it's it's sure. good for. But if it happened to it me, sucks, yep. though. I'm sorry. It's the oil change you don't want. Oh, I would have been 12 years old, going like, "Who has weed? <laughs> these what are now, these? These yeah. are cramps. These are oh, terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. They're bad. Ten days. I would. I mean, I would get it. Ten to 14 days. Yep. Yeah. That was Why me too, I, man. I want to fart and cry. Like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Ten to 14 days of bleeding. One week of being absurdly depressed and manic. And then one week of like recovery after you get about three days out so of the month. Never where you're never happy. That's There's why no joy. I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> Explains a lot, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you get rid of it? It's all I want to know is can you but, get yeah, rid of it? Like that would be my that, question. Then there are a whole that bunch of other there, yeah. issues yeah, with that. Yeah, but then you got to have babies. Then you're like, crazy. No, 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 no. That. Like, like your estrogen and all. I mean, yeah, that, it, it could go, you can go put nuts. Put me on the estrogen drip. drip. I want to get. Estrogen drip. Yeah, but that's not good for you either. That's where breast cancer comes from too. So yeah, so like, there's well, no. Needless to, say, needless to say, I'm not the one who should be talking about this. Power surges. They're not hot flashes anymore. They're power surges. No way. Yeah, it's when they're sending out too many megawatts. Yeah, because <laughs> like woo. Stacy turns of a sudden, like you'll see Stacy almost like like in a southern church. She's like, "Who? I gotta go. What the hell? I gotta walk <laughs> out. 
And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, you know. And I'm like, I don't, but I'm okay. Hot flash. And I'm like, <laughs> let me know if you need anything. Yeah. Um, all right. So, like, steam so tampons. Oh, right. So I left to, okay. to use the restroom and he was like, oh, well, that's going to put a damper on the evening. No. Something, like something to that effect. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, first of all, that's not going to happen. Second of all, I have a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> And, and it ain't you. And he's like, well, that doesn't bother me. And I'm like, oh my God, this is me. getting worse. Like, <laughs> it's it, not men terrible? Worse. <laughs> not all men, but this, I mean, men in power who think they can control situations yeah, based on their is there a presumption sucks. of that? Like I've right. never, I've never forget, forget a play. I've never, I've never brought a female out for chicken wings and then went, well, I guess you well, know I what's guess, happening next. I guess you, I, My do turn. you have to eat the fries with gravy? <laughs> you know, like who's like scumbag shit uh, like that? Like I don't like me too. Like we all heard about it, but like I remember being in LA and and somebody said to me, um, about Brett Ratner. They're like Brett Ratner likes young Russian women, and I'm like, well, who doesn't? <laughs> And he's like, no, like 14. No, and I'm like, like, oh, well, that's oh, yeah, different. Oh, yeah, that's illegal. And he's like, yeah. and Brian Singer likes young boys. And I'm like, I can't say the same answer. I said, I said, how? He's like, same age. Yeesh. And I'm like, and I'm like, nobody fucking does anything about this. Like, nobody's like, unwritten rule, man. Like, you don't, they make money. So and we're going to ignore I'm it. I'm sure I'm not the first. And there, and they, no, that's a, and you probably weren't the last. Definitely not. I definitely didn't hear from the guy after that. Like no auditions, no anything. I didn't think, I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I fucked up. Maybe I should have said beforehand that I'm not going to put out if we go to a play. Yeah, but like why I should, need to why should that be a precondition? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I felt Going like on what everything you thought was, was my a business fault. endeavor. And this has, this had happened, <clears throat> you know, since then I've had, um, I mean, I, I don't know a, a female out there that hasn't at least had something happen to them at some point or another. I mean, even if it's just an implied, like, you know, you and I would do great together. Yeah. Like, is that too, is, and I'm just trying to, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to educate funny. other men. That's, I mean, that's cute and funny. But if you're going to assume that, just assume anything. Yeah. If you have a, if <laughs> you have a buzzer period. that locks your door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, like, you might be that one that we're talking about. <laughs> I, I, the whole Me Too thing, like I thought, all those guys, you know, some of them, I don't, I just, I just think no one ever said please don't do that, and they just got out. They just like Louis C.K. You know, I'm still on the fence about like, is it weird? Yeah, it's really fucking weird. But you know, he never hurt anybody or made anybody. You know, he could have walked out. But then they say this power thing, and I'm like, it's hard. I don't. And I understand it because I because I think about it and I'm like, well, what if I was sitting there and Louis C- C.K. was just like, would would I have gotten up or would I you know would I would I, I, I mean, continue to eat my sandwich? I don't know, I don't know what know. I would do. It, you don't know, and that's the thing. And I wasn't you know I wasn't in the room with him, and I don't know what you know what the I mean, hell. That should happened. almost that's, be a class now at NYU. It, it's like it how should, do how do recognize predatorial behavior? Uh, it should also there should just be you know ways. Not that there needs to be a class for men, but or you know, because sometimes, I mean, that's that's a parenting thing. I think maybe I don't know. Also, it's a promotion thing. We shouldn't promote them, right? Well, because what bothered me was this, like with with like even with like the Matt Lauer shit, right? And I keep going to it because I think it's the creepiest, for in a weird way. Harvey's a monster. That's not creepy. But girls like He's didn't a remember stuff, monster. right? I don't really. No, not with Matt Lauer. Who, who, he had a button under his desk that, oh, would close, right. that would lock the door. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then okay, I knew like, there was something like weird. Uh, and they're like, and Matt Lauer installed. No, he didn't. The electrician came in and installed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The accountant who approved the PO yeah. installed mm-hmm. it. The producer who did the budget saw it and approved it. It's like across the board, yeah, like, are you, are you culpable? Like a secret. Yeah. No, it wasn't a secret. It never was. Like at least know. with like, you know the, the the Brett Ratner shit like that was like the seedy version of like underneath because it was literal like unequivocal crimes like crimes against children crimes against fo- I don't know if crimes against foreigners is a thing <laughs> but think, regardless you're all human all, beings I was gonna say it's all yeah. like human on the other side of that but I don't think I I still don't think the scope and breadth is understood about what 
women go through in this business. Cause I would, cause I would, cause I would tell people and it, it was shitty. I'm like, you know, how's LA? And I'm like, it's a man's world. Well, it, a lot of people, we're, you know, we were watching the Chappelle thing earlier about, you know, if you can't bring attention to it, you know, uh, who will, or I don't know, but the, <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of uh, people say, and I, even myself, I, I would consider myself to be feminist. Like I believe in feminine rights and I'm a female and, um, that's right. Uh, I wasn't disputing, but it. the idea that women are going too far in saying things like he looked at me when I wore a skirt and it's like, all right, yeah, maybe that's a little much like you wear things so that, I mean, I don't know why else you would wear a skirt that exposes your vagina if you didn't want the attention of some sort and i'm acutely aware of my t- of where my testicles are at all times with when you wear mini skirts any uh, pants just, <laughs> any pants i'm like can anyone see this but here's the thing i after i would i you know, I'm, I, I somewhat i would be like mm, you're right yeah maybe maybe women do have a, a, a little bit of this responsibility but i kind of got in the mindset of well if we're going to go extreme in one direction, I think it's okay that we maybe push in that direction a little bit too much and then maybe settle on something a little. Oh, I told you have to, you have to have a, 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 an, a like what a disproportionate response. Because right. Because the disproportionate so that, for, response. Well, if this, way, it'll, it'll, it has if to this even way goes out somewhere. 75 feet, this way has got to go 150 and then right, hopefully right. you'll come back somewhere to in the middle. somewhere where, you know, there's a, yeah. there's a logical understanding about behavior. And that's, I mean, that's where I, yeah, my, my, hopefully for the rest of my life, my ideal, my ideas and ideals will change on a day to day basis because I'm always fluid, new Mm -hmm. information and new thoughts. And I, you know, sit with things longer, but that's something that it it, it did actually take me a minute to be like, you know what, that's probably a good idea. And it's okay that it's, it's kind of in that direction because it, Hopefully well, I think we'll it has settle to, I somewhere think it, I real. Think it, like, it, I think it has to find out where the line is of too far the other way. Uh, yeah. And then once you find that out, I th- even I don't the know people who on decides the, uh, that though. Like, well, who decides what the hell's anything. fashionable? I think yeah. it's three jerks in Manhattan. But what do I know? You know, <laughs> I, here's what's in this so this know. this year. You have Why patches on? Why are you the person that hmm. decides that? If I want to wear hammer pants, why can't I? Oh, you can. Well, they're back. Are yeah, they back? I was going to say, I think that's Are you shitting me? Hammer starting, pants are back? Uh, they were back, and they're starting to slowly fade out again. You're, yeah, you're missing it. It was a blip. It, it's a, it was it's true. It. The blip. That was the kids wanting to be retro oh, for a oh, moment. Oh, 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 you're missing it. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you did there. So, um, but but you, you've you probably figured out, you know, you, you but you seem like one of the, like a, a person who's very like, I'll, I'll bark once, and then the next time I'm going to bite. Or is that inappropriate? Mm, what do you mean a, an by that? An unfair assumption. Where it's like you give the warning where it's like, don't go there. And then afterwards, if you, you go that. there again, you're going to be like, now I'm going to now I'm gonna really fuck shit up. That's really interesting that that's the perception. Um, <clears throat> I I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I'm a man. <laughs> I think I, especially now that I'm in stunts and I'm, you know, I, you know, social media wise, I'll post videos of me fighting and like fight scenes and people are, you oh, you're so badass stuff or how how bad yeah is it? <laughs> yeah is it like I mean, comments cre- like on your I, stories i try to be ASL? really i try to be really understanding of people that message me or or um reach out and try to well, trying to get into their heads is actually kind of scary sometimes but yeah, so don't I, try. I just i don't. i i realize though that it's most of the people that go a little overboard are the people that kind of help you keep your like keep keep your career like a, a lot of actors and stuff like you need the people that are a little bit over the top to boost what your what social do you media like those are the fans like that's your everyday normal you know super fans are kind of what drives oh like so, actors and but things like that that's not really a compromise they're is also it? people like they are real life people and the internet provides ways that you can find other people and that scares me mm-hmm. so i want to make sure that i if I do respond or if someone says something to me, unless it's threatening. And I mean, I have this. Like, are you a polite gen- responder? I, yes. And I don't always respond. And I don't, I don't check my Instagram messages. Cause there's, a, I think there's not be, 
because there's a lot like, oh, I get so many messages, but I just have better things to do with my time than to then try to politely filter respond through. To yeah, an yeah, asshole. it's not, and not, I'm yeah. not trying to be rude. And I try to respond to people, especially if they're commenting or if someone says that, you know, oh, I love your work, it's really inspiring, it helped me break out of a funk. Thank you. When I was going through that's chemo awesome. or something, that's like that's awesome. that yeah. is really cool. And I'll do my best to, and that's that's you know, that's a quick second or two, but I don't really spend as much time with social media as a lot of other uh people do do you, do you know that me. Do, do you know that i read an article that said there's zero correlation between um like box office potential and how many social media followers you have because hmm. everybody was like well do they have an instagram because i heard of people getting hired because they had x amount of followers it's true well yeah. especially broadway i know i know that there's definitely a relationship there. oh is there really like i'm i had uh uh, a friend of mine who is on Broadway currently tell me that um, they will they will bring people in for auditions who have more uh, followers. They'll check their, their they social media. Up? It's on their resumes now. They in put for, how many followers yeah. they have on their fucking calls resumes and stuff, now? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I see it on a lot of casting calls. And they're like bigger casting calls like Netflix and Amazon. And I really I know that that's Unless thing. there's really – like that Logan Paul guy maybe – but he's yeah. one. He's just one mm-hmm. out of these seven trillion videos on on fucking YouTube. Yep. Wow. So many people. I don't know. So I don't even want to even. I just don't want to think about that world because that's not anything I'm interested in. I know that. They're, they're, it's I know. Almost, it's I have almost to know like that they're forcing you to have to do like this facet of 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 your job as a career that you have zero interest in. And it's right. not like taxes. You should just hire someone for that. <clears throat> Popularity. Yeah. Yeah. But then you're like, what are you posting today, Melissa? Cause yesterday you misspelled well, yeah, this. Now, yeah. I'm saying like back in the day you had a publicist and they just handled your magazine they stuff. And I'm sure they do. And I'm sure that I know that they, you like a lot of actors would, will hire or like, I know that, um, and I could be wrong on the specific details, but I know Blind Blind Spot or NBC or whoever they'll hire. They have like a a a person, like a social media person that does all their stuff. But then they like also the handle they'll handle the show, and then they'll do like some of the main actors, and they'll do their personal uh, like Instagram accounts as, as stuff. like a as like a. In like, addition to, yes, or like, in addition to, and, and it, but you is know, that, post is that, the right is that con- hashtags and but stuff. But is like that, that contracted between the show the sh- and the individual? Yeah, to do the network, I believe. So the talent I'm doesn't have any say in who's going to access their Instagram and post. Well, them? yeah, they do, and then the, I'm sh- I'm sure they have like final say because it's their personal right. Instagram account. It's not like Sully Blind Spot, mm-hmm. whatever. It's like Sullivan Stapleton's, whatever. So, um, what? How did you? I'm happy we meet you a little bit. Yeah. How how did you how did you move from seven thousand weird jobs, getting yourself through school, getting your diploma? Oh yeah, I didn't even touch on some of those crazy like some of the crazy shit I did. But like, at, well, we only have so much time. Heidi. Dirty tomato. Dirty. <laughs> or Wait, what? Throw, throwing like rotten tomatoes. So my parents don't even know about some of the stuff that, that, that you I've had done. to do. Or that I, yeah, that I, that I, that some of the jobs. I had to lay on the third rail while the train came over. Yeah. It was shocking. I almost died, but they gave me $17. <laughs> In quarters. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> oh, boy. Because it's, because electricity goes through it. What's that called? There's an insulator and then there's a. Conduit? Wait, no. No. What is it? Dude, they both what? know. Throw out the anchor. We're drifting. This is. Like- I know. I'm sorry. Anyway, okay. so, <laughs> so, anyways, so you. Yes, so did. after after college, then what? So jobs uh, galore. So you got agents, or, or, uh, or at least you got agent. rid of one. Unbeknownst <clears throat> to me, yeah, just disappeared. Um, but I was getting um some small things. I did uh like day play stuff, or yeah, um, and non union stuff. I. I I booked a <laughs> I booked a, an MTV like PSA thing where I was a like a teenager. Uh, this was this was amazing. I was a teenager who failed a driving test, and then you find out like she has an STD because she had unsafe sex, and <laughs> she's like really you know depressed or whatever. And then it kind of like rewinds. She had herpes. 
<laughs> well, exactly. Then <laughs> rewinds. She like sees like a condom and like does everything like the right way. And she like doesn't have an STD. And she like almost gets out of the driving test, but then she like hits something and she's like, oh, I failed the test again, but at least I don't have an STD. That was. Wow. Yeah. The more you know. Yeah. Like the MTV Terrible. version of that. I didn't want to hit anything. The I've been hitting enough know. things over here. My yeah. grandmother died, but at least I don't have herpes. <laughs> exactly. You're just like, what? That was, I mean, oh, for a teenager, I guess that's like. Yeah, but I mean, were you, you know, know, were you known as happens. the STD girl then, though? Bad because happens, I always wondered but... about that. Like, you know, like they have. Joey got true. known They've as got, the. You know, the, friends, the adult Joey diapers. Oh, yeah, because he did the, the, yeah. the ad for uh, mm-hmm. her, herpes, I think. I think right? it was herpes, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so you were, the gift so you were, that keeps you were on just, giving. You were just <laughs> plugging away at that every day? When I was you, auditioning for like 500 things and how then getting one. How terrible the process is that? It's just hard. Just having people, I mean, any actor will tell you. It's a, especially, I've always been slightly athletic. I've always had a younger face than I did body. So everything that I was hearing well, I'm, You know, you've was, accomplished a lot in your first 23 years mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Stop. <laughs> Did it make you realize? Stop a little bit. That's all right. Lighting. It's the red walls. Um, yeah. The, uh, You're in hell. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that's, that's it. Not yeah. That's it. Yes. Red mm-hmm. Or the bottom of a cherry pie. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, no, I want pie. Cherry pie. Cherry pie. Warrant. Mm. All anyway, right, so anyways. So uh, I would always be told Ferrets. in auditions, like, you need to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, <clears throat> how the fuck am I? At the time, even, I was like 120 pounds. So I was like thinking in my head, like, how the fuck shit. would I? They would, would always I go, would, you need to lose. I've been, I've been in the room when people audition after they leave, and it is brutal. Well, yeah, me too. I'm, oh. Hashtag me too. I was... You know, at NYU, I had an internship, so I was, you know, in uh, I was I worked for I worked with uh, at the Gersh Agency for a semester, um, and got to video some uh, like back when like you'd go into the agency and then right. they would video your auditions, and I would be the person you know videoing your audition. This That's college what I did. Student. It was brutal. <laughs> but um, yeah, just uh, being on the other side, even and for them to tell me that to my face, you know that. You know, you look young, but you've, you know, you're a little muscular, so you would be more of like a tough girl, but your face doesn't really match that. Or I'm like, well, I'll put a sweater on. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just didn't get it. And um, Tom Cruise is three foot two. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Maybe if I was shorter, it would have played better. If I had boobs or I don't know. But uh, it wasn't working for me with the the acting as far as at that time what I w- would I mean, was it? I mean, was it pride swallowing, or was it like exhausting, or was it like I just don't want to? Because it seems it's, like one of those things. Like every day is a disappointment. It really, and then I would, you know, I had my like twenty five dollar gym membership to Bally's, and then my five dollar margarita that I would get after the gym, which was right outside. <laughs> and uh, it was like, I, yeah, but I would go to the gym for you know a long time. I'd just sit on the elliptical until my legs fell off, and I do like I worked out my whole life, so I was that, trying did, to get did that rid give of you the a muscle. complex. Um, so or an insecurity, at least? I definitely did not help. I didn't realize for years and years that I was dealing with an eating disorder. I didn't have any clue. Um, I just Neither thought did Elton. Yeah. I mean, there, and it, <laughs> oh boy. Um, that was a great movie by the way. Did you see that? I, I, we were, I was just talking about so seeing good. that. We we're just talking so about good. watching that. So yeah. Good. Rocket, rocket man. Oh, right. so good. So, so that's obviously in there. So how many years was it just not <sighs> eating? To no, uh, I would, and we don't have to talk binge. about this. Idea. No, it's it. I I try to be very open about it because I don't think I think if people think if you're not eating a big dinner and throwing up after every meal, you're not bulimic, or you know what I mean? Like, there are a lot of people think that just because uh, you don't uh, they think you don't eat or you eat or you binge and purge, right? Or, right. But, but the thing is. <clears throat> You don't have to have like, quote, full blown symptoms of a specific eating disorder to have a problem and have a need to get some help to, because right. eventually, no matter what you're doing, it's going to fuck up your system for the yeah. rest of your life. Not just, it, you're not going to just be skinny after you do that or. And then you, and your clock sets back to zero and everything's mm-hmm. okay again once you get well, help. Right. Like you would, I mean, for me personally, I would 
I am an overeater. My, my you know, kind of runs in my family. My dad's a bit of an overeater himself. And I just, I'm noticing it now. Um, it, it's just a, like a personality thing. You know, you just, is it tastes, it's not even that it's like, I, you try to like fill it. You, you learn about that stuff. Like once you face your problems, What's you talk joke? to somebody about it, but there's a all, joke that's like, I eat till I hate myself. Yeah. I used well, to do that. I hate myself when I eat until I hate myself again, like a full circle. But it just feels like you're filling a void kind of. Um, like is it, well, for me, is it like while you're doing it, you feel good? Or you it's feel that like, like pleasure pain thing. Yeah. Like it just tastes good on the tongue. But the second you like make that swallow sound, you feel so full. But then like your brain's like, oh, wait, but that tasted good. So let's do that again. Right. You know, even though you're like totally, totally full, your intestines can't even take anymore. Right. But, and it wasn't even just too much of that, which I ate an entire babka loaf. I don't know if you know what babka no, is. No, I don't. It's, I love babka. It's good, oh but my not God. a whole. I mean, big like one. a slice or two, yeah. and you should be good. But I, I brought a loaf of babka home for the holidays. Uh, uh, and, on, and no one got in any. 2013. No, they didn't, because I ate the whole thing in the car on the way home from New York. It's, uh, think of like almost like a thick, like brioche heavy kind of bread. Wrapped up and rolled with like rolled in chocolate, pretty much. So like a slice of it would be about three hundred calories, I'd say, right? Something. So you got like a oh yeah, and I used to get the kind with like the the cream cheese, like the cheese oh, on it. Oh oh yeah and yeah the yeah. Berries and stuff. Oh my gosh! Then yeah, there's other the the re- original babka is like cinnamon, mm-hmm. cinnamon, cinnamon. Synonyms. Synonyms. Cinnamon. So how long did you have that for? And how did you well, how'd you beat that? Are you still working on so it? So when I moved to LA, I'll kind of like fill in the gap real quick. I moved to LA. Excuse me. <coughs> um in the process of being an actor, uh got into the whole stunt world thing. I thought that would be better as far as uh body image. Because you're at least training and I wouldn't be you know, it, I would be among people who were a little more muscular to begin with. But then you try to double people and you're never, you're never small enough. Excuse me again. <coughs> Wait, is everyone small? Do you want water? I got a tea. What kind of tea is that? I gave her hair its exclusive <gasps> edition. Earl Grey. Mm-hmm. She got the exclusive? Yep. You know oh, who else man, drinks Earl good. Grey? Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> Continue. Patrick. LA. Patrick Stewart. Um, and I realized doubling, you're never small enough. Like I was either doubling people that were several sizes larger, or if I was doubling somebody smaller, um, I would have to just starve myself for a little while and try to try to fill fill the the fill the role. Isn't that terrible but, to 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 do if you have to do physical work? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, that's a whole thing. Um, but. In just trying to move along the the Bobka story, um, I had (laughs) I had a very famous stunt woman tell me in an email. I I sent her an email and I was like, "Do you have advice for me?" Um, We were we worked together. She gave me her email address and you know she encouraged me to be in touch and ask her any questions. So you know I was like, "Thank you so much for giving me your information. Really appreciate you you know offering to help." This is early, early in my career. And she wrote back, she's like, well, the only advice I can give you is I know for a fact that you won't work at your current size and you're going to need to lose some weight. And I was like, fuck, this sucks. Because I already felt like I was working really hard to get smaller and I already had dudes telling me I was too big. I had acting people telling me I was too big. And I, like I said, I was about 120 pounds, maybe 125, maybe 130 when I was really working out, I was doing CrossFit. And um, I was not. Oh, so you like bulked up. I wasn't even, but that's the thing. I wasn't, I have pictures. I look back at pictures of myself on the beach, like doing handstands. I wasn't bulky. I wasn't like, you didn't look at me and go, she's definitely a gymnast or something. Yeah. You're like, oh, she like works out, you know? She she cares about her she health. She cares yes. about her body. And yeah. I, I figured if I'm doing stunts, I should probably be able to do stunts and to like recover and hit the ground and do all the, the required things. Yeah. If you think of like Peak what a stunt ability. is, they hire you to do the things where you get fucked up, you yeah, know? Yeah. So honest to God, I think CrossFit and working out and just being super strong was what kept my body from falling apart early on. Um, and then later when I started doubling other people, 
just arranging my workouts and things so that I was not as strong and just I did like I looked more like the actress and still taking the hard hits. That's when I had more injuries. That's when I wasn't recovering as well. It's when I started doing sit ups. I started getting this like like sore on my butt. I used to hear about it like a, a, a what is it called like a like a, a sit up sore. It's never it's heard like of on it. your t- well. It's yeah. if you do like a ton of sit ups and your tailbone rubs on the ground and you get like brush burn basically. And it oh, okay. Sore. But I never had that because I always had a huge butt. I used to, yes, Neosporin. Neosporin yes. to band aid. But uh, yeah, I always had a nice, big, muscular butt from CrossFit. Who's in there? That's Who are Angelo. you looking at? That's Angelo. Mm-hmm. He's on tour right now with a band called Cold. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right, LA. Mm-hmm. I'm working my way through know. here. Oh. I want to get up to Blind Spot. Okay. <laughs> well, when I moved to LA, though, like I, I, Asked my Had friend you gone to stunt school yet, though? I went to stunt school before I moved to LA. Okay, so now you're out. So what? So you're out there working, and you can't get work. Or well, you I'm can't working, get, but I'm not like I'm not like those girls who just double. They're just like constantly doubling people. Right. I get a lot of ND work, nondescript stunt work, uh, which and also this woman with child thrown through window, kind of, or like <laughs> gets shoved by man running. That kind of thing. Oh, like in the yeah. Jason you see a Bourne. guy. You see some guy like running through a crowd, and he like shoves the lady out of the way. I'm like the lady that gets shoved out of the way, like that kind of stuff. Okay. I, um, but I, um, but I did double the chick from Paranormal Activity, uh, Katie Featherson. She was in Point Paranormal Activity. Yeah, yeah. And wait, Paranormal you're the Activity one too. Yes, and she has. She's got huge boobs. Yeah, and they gave me like a bra. This was pretty funny. It was my first, my first really big like Breasts. movie. Oh, that too. <laughs> I kept bumping into people with them. Like really? somebody, like people would be coming by. Like the sound guy would come by, and I was like, "Scoot out of the way." I'm so used to just like being small and yeah, like yeah. getting out of the way. I I don't have tits. I have like right. you know, maybe a B. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm, not a, I'm not confirming or denying. I'm just agreeing <laughs> right. that you said that. I did say yeah. that. You can say that. You're, you I'm have eyes. New. You have eyes. It's fine. Um, up there, baby. <laughs> up there. You only ever see me from the neck up. I, do, I don't even I know could what you be look a, like. I could not have pants on you right now. You could look like an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if Willy <laughs> Wonka is going to show chocolate at you. I have no idea. Oh, Augustus, chocolate. no, but it's delicious. It's twice today. But it's delicious. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so your parents, but that was a huge movie. Uh, yeah, it ended up being a huge movie with a, like a smaller budget. So I'm still seeing stuff from that movie. It's pretty great. But people would bump into me and I'd be like, sorry, they're not, they're not mine. I'd, <laughs> they're new. They're new. <laughs> but no, but they don't, they come out. They, uh, uh, yeah. Awkward. Um, but that's still part of the being somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And I really embrace that aspect of the stunt world as you do get to be somebody else, but you also don't have to like be. You're like, it's like the not hot hot spot. You don't have to be the person, but you're the person. So like when they say action, they're only concerned with your performance. You get to be somebody else. It's like kind of a roundabout way of going back to why I like got into stunts. I kind of like that aspect. So how did, so what, what, what were, how did you progress? Cause it seems like paranormal activity is like a good one to have on the resume. Oh, for sure. And I met some really, I met one of, if not my best friend in stunts during doing that film, still uh, Megan Godfrey's my my angel and she like was like my best girlfriend it's hard to find a girlfriend in stunts especially out in LA yeah yeah been there it's not it's everyone's super nice and sunshiny to your face and the second you like turn your back you that's so weird it is weird it is what it is but it's I always I like, love New York though man like they'll, they'll f- go fuck yourself yeah. to your face <laughs> yeah. yeah and then you earn the respect and, yep. and they're like alright you're yeah. cool I'm like I like this yeah. I like this way 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 more yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was so what was the biggest thing you did after paranormal activity out there? Because then then you got to change coasts. That's got to yeah. Be hard. I did well. I I did a lot of TV stuff, which was really cool. I, the thing is also I I refused to date stunt people in order to advance my career. Um, or oh, I no. just integrity. I I really felt that was important, and I um because you don't shit where you eat. Well, yeah. that and I knew that I'm the only person that I have to live with the rest of my life. Like we were talking before, you can't Mm -hmm. escape it. Can't escape it. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, now that I'm developing, you know, a personality that I like and I don't have to create an an alter, you know, an artifice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's just nice to be able to sleep better, you know? Yeah. Um, 
it's extremely difficult because you see people advancing, you know, that are the same size, same whatever, but yeah. they're dating so and so. And I've also, I mean, talk about like having people uh, in power try to. I, I'm not going to say uh, names ever because I feel like, you know, they know who they are. And I've had stunt guys and and coordinators um, come at me hard and uh, like. Because of a failed advance? Just, no, trying to make advance advances. Like, oh, come out, at you, like, actually hard? Come at me, and, like, in there a, have a, been several instances where, I mean, from, that's what I said earlier about, you You know, you said I, you think I, I'd tell you once, and the second time I'd, like, wreck you, but. Um, no, I think there's a dog bark, and then there's, yeah. then there's a bite. Well, I've. I freeze, turns out. Um, and this happens to a lot of women. Like you just like, like hit pause. I can't, like um, even in college, uh, I just remember like a neighbor uh, of mine came down in his bathrobe into my, do- no into my room. No man ever be in a bathrobe. First of all, around yes. anyone. <laughs> Second of all, Agreed. I just, you know, and it, this isn't the first time it's happened, but I thought that I was older and I, I had experiences where I learned to, you know, say no, it's, it's, it's not so much you're giving permission, but when you're in like that position and you're kind of frozen, Oh, I'm talking they, just myself. I have had guys. I've heard of uh, this is not unique. I mean, not to say correct. That, yeah. No, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say yeah. as well as, you know, if she didn't say no. Well, she obviously didn't say yes. And, yeah. Um, no words doesn't mean yes. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. And it, it, I've had several times men, only men. I mean, I'm sure it's happened with women. And I know it's happened with like women and men, like w- women doing the same thing to men, like women in power. Right. But in the, in my specific case, I can't speak to that. But um, I've definitely had men force themselves on me and I've been just emotionally powerless and, and, and couldn't do anything about it. Um, but it is interesting how people think that, you know, just because someone has like a tougher exterior, perhaps that they would be able to say no. No, that just goes it's, to show my ignorance. But, and that, that was a, a regular, I don't, I hate to say it, but it was kind of a regular occurrence. You'd think you'd learn and you'd, you know, I beat myself up. I still beat myself up over it because I feel like, uh, maybe I'm not setting a good example for someone else, but you're talking about like taking classes. There, there should be there should be at least a dialogue on how you can get out of a situation as a female, and there should be a dialogue and conversation and a class maybe on for for the other side when to know, yeah, or not like when to know, just don't. But th- they you think know? HR is gonna. Oh, they got it. Yeah. And it's like no, no, no. And it all happens outside of you know. On it's set. not on set. Like, no. Yeah. Or you know, at work or at do you your job. Th- do you think? Th- do you think that you know, being being that you mentioned that there are women that abuse their position, I don't think to anywhere near the degree of I'm, men. I'm sure it's maybe a little. It, I mean, women just have parts of their body that are or I mean, men have orifices as well, but you know, <laughs> men can't get pregnant. We do. Um, oh. There are more. You know what I mean? It's a not. It, it's not any better or worse. It's just it's the definite uh, soft spot, if you will. Like there are definitely, um, you, 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 as a female, I feel a little bit more vulnerable because I have all these holes that things go <laughs> go in. Jeez, oh, I don't mean to laugh at that, Heidi. <laughs> no, but holy I just, shit! I don't know how to say. I don't know how to describe, but it's true. I mean, like I've I've had to. At one point, like something did snap in in me and I was able to get out of a sticky situation. And that's not the case for a lot of people. No, and it's it, not. It's not the case for me 100% of the time either. But, you know, you, you start to just do you, shut down completely. Do you think like just like I was saying about like NYU, like anybody who's getting into the end of, into this business, I mean, look, it's I don't think it's just the entertainment business either, you know? Right. I think there's construction companies that misbehave. I think there's insurance companies that misbehave. Wall Street, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but it should be like a required thing in college or something that no matter what field you go into, we're going to have a class for the males. 
and we're gonna have a class for the females. And those genders non-specific as well. Just and the other and the, <laughs> and everyone in between. And whoever else wants to, the and men can go to the others. female classes. The females can go to the men classes as long as we're doing them. Because I think if you're putting if you're putting, all right, I'm not going down this road. But anyways, I know, it's, it's you a, should they. Here's what men should look for. Here's what women should look for. Here's how men should behave. Here's how women should behave. Just a reinforcement of it to just be like, don't abuse your power. Don't be an asshole. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to get like, through mm-hmm. to no everyone. No answer doesn't mean no. Like simple things like that. Just because you didn't get an answer doesn't mean it's a yes or a no. Yeah, but we know that yeah. from childhood. If mom doesn't wow. say that, we should know. We if mom sh- says, exactly. if mom doesn't say yes that you can eat the ice cream bar, you should not eat the ice cream bar. Mm-hmm. And there's right. kids that do that all kids the time. So you're not going to stop them out. So mom has to slap the shit out of you a little bit. And I know You'd you hope. can't, can't do hope. that. You know, I, I wish my parents beat me more. Um, I wouldn't <laughs> I have done half I'd the be, shit I did. Still could um, be arranged, you know. <laughs> they want to. They really want They're to. They're both and alive. I'm like, well, I'm at the age where you can go to jail. Um, Aww, I love you. Parents. So getting. So when did you get to New York? And then how? And then what? What was the thing that was like, I've had enough of L.A.? Oh, um, well, there was <clears throat> some of the, a little personal thing that kind of took me back to the East Coast. I was considering just coming back temporarily to kind of recharge and um, take care of some personal stuff. And um, I just, I remember driving back to New York and... Uh, from L.A.? I, from L.A., I... Drove back to New York. A friend of mine, I asked her to come with me just to keep me company and had a nice trip back. And I remember pulling, it was, you know, 80 degrees and sunny in California. And I get, I'm driving now up, up 81 into Wilkes-Barre. Past Tennessee. Like going to my, yeah. 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 Through like Atlanta and all that. And um, just progressively getting colder. It was January. Tw- I left. January 26th and I got home February like 3rd or something. I don't know. It took eight days and I like stopped along the way at friends places. And, um, that's the cool thing about like having friends that live across the country. You can, yeah, no hotels, no hotels. Yeah. 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 But I did the dishes and I made breakfast and I, I always left a gift. Still grateful hotel. guest. Mm-hmm. Yes. Grateful guest. Yeah. Zero money on the way out there, but I managed to come up with some sort of same yeah. thing on the way out. When I asked my buddy for a ride to California, yeah. I was like, I want to go out there. Can you have a ride? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I have two weeks in September that might work. I'm like, perfect. That's all right. Let's rock. That's good. Yeah. Sold Going Mary back Kay. on your own, buddy. Yeah. Mm. So he did. He wanted to go back on his own. And like, he took It's a great drive, home. man. You get to learn a lot. He got stuck in a snowstorm on the way back in Colorado, I think. You got to learn a lot. Yes. So how did you, so when you got to New York, did you already have jobs lined up or did you have? I didn't have anything quite lined up as much as I had a friend who was working on Spider-Man and. Which one? uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Emma Stone and. Mark Watts, I believe is the director. And yeah. And. Tom Holland. No, no. It was Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Garfield. Um, they were really cool too. <clears throat> but uh, I, I got my, like they pick pictures for, I don't know if you saw the movie, they have like people like f- like frozen and a lot of the stuff like when he does his Spidey, Spidey thing. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they did a bus sequence where like the, we actually were on a bus that got hit. Like the stuff people were on a bus that got hit and then they d- they realized, I guess, they can't use background. So they ended up using us for a ton of days and they we did all this like cool like mocap stuff and green screen and at so that was your first time, job out there? Um, or one of the first ones? That was one of the first ones. I had um, a buddy of mine recommended me for a couple of TV shows when I got back. The following, I ended up doing just Kevin some- Kevin Bacon? And, uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is like the fucking coolest. Yeah, He's you know why? seriously the coolest. Bernie Madoff stole all his money. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It is true. Yeah. Well, Bernie it might Madoff's be true, but shit. He's, he's really I always heard that really about awesome. him. He's a real nice down-to-earth guy. Threw a pistachio at my head once. He was, was it anyway. open or was it was it no. deshelled or shelled? No, it was shelled. Oh. It was awesome. He was cracking them and then he was tossing them and catching them in his mouth in the in uh, Steiner in the lobby. And he looked at me. So cool. And he took a pistachio. He looked at the pistachio and looked at me and he just went oh, and just threw it at my head. <laughs> Not even like to throw it in my mouth. Like like legit was just trying to hit me in the face with it. But um, nah, he was the coolest and um, 
I got a job on the following, just doubling some random person and met the crew there. And I really liked the coordinator. The coordinator really liked me. And it, and it was really cool to find coordinators that I was just like, kind of like on the defense always. Cause yeah. I didn't have any interest in hooking up with a coordinator to get a job, but it's really cool. Most of the coordinators in New York are married and have families and are cool. Last legit, thing like, on their mind. Yeah. 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 They just want to do the job. They're, it's like the cowboys in the west and the gangsters on the east. It's pretty. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, so they're all about like family. But it so. seems like you're getting better and better gigs. Well, yeah. So I mean, off of reputation as opposed to you know who you just who you know because right. you know them or because you blew them. Right. So, um, and not to say that anyone in that California that is. You know, doing that, doing that exclusively, or that—that's only the way you get a job in California. Obviously, if you're good, you you you'll work as well. But um, it just seems like there's a little bit more there. There's a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and that's again, that's just my personal experience. Experiences. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, New York, working, got recommendations, and just kept training, and 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 uh, I got really into. Like same thing with college where I just wanted to keep doing other things. I realized like what the coordinator, I wanted to do well as a performer. So I would ask the coordinator, you know, little questions here and there and just like little bits over time and then started to get an idea. Tips of, and tricks, but not like start at the beginning. Right. What, what should I know? Right. Yeah. Right. And and learning more about camera angles and, and stuff like that and lenses. And I was into photography when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Um, like, you know, my little manual Pentax camera my sister gave me when I was 16 and just learning the very, very basics of that kind of stuff. And then hearing the, you know, the vernacular and like the language on set, even for years before that, um, and making my own little, uh, movie, like what I did go to stunt school and we had these like little camcorders with the little cassette tapes in them and we'd try to do the best we could and but you'd actually, her. you'd actually choreograph and film sequences, right? Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I had been doing that also right along with whoever had the equipment. I just didn't have anything. I was very, I mean, I, I've been, I, I've, I've been starving in my, like in, in New York, a couple, I'm lucky it only lasted maybe a couple months here and there, maybe a couple months out in California where I was literally going to bed like with stomach pangs nights after night after night and, you know, no money at all and learning how to get by and, but still, like, if you love what you do, and that kind of fed me. Um, but you don't regret any of that. Not at all. Mm-hmm. It yeah. totally did, and it really makes you appreciate it. Not that I think you need to suffer. actually starve and suffer, yeah. but if that's a consequence of it, you'll learn, you'll, you'll learn what you really... Like, if I was working in accounting and starving, I'd be like, this, this is fucking dumb. What am I doing? <laughs> I hate my life. But... Um, <clears throat> But I started learning about like what the, and then I'd have coordinators be like, here, break down the scene for me. And I'm like, all right, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, that's how I learned to properly do that kind of stuff. And, um, and then I ended up because of, you know, learning that stuff started to kind of have an eye behind the camera, which helped in turn make me a better performer. And, um, which also helped get jobs and and to know that I'm someone that a coordinator can leave to, to, to do devices. yeah to yeah. to do what they do oh trustworthy or, oh yeah that's yeah. that's a thing everyone's you hitting the microphone sorry. I know. sorry I'm hit it too but uh, yeah and then eventually I well I had an injury I don't know, I'll kind of breeze past this but I had an injury in 2015 where I um, essentially like broke my neck and, and oh you told me about this yeah and had a lot of nerve damage and couldn't really work for a while but um and that was just like a freak accident it was not anything anyone could have foreseen um but in getting back to work i had to turn down a job on the purge which was a movie that was shooting in boston at the time oh i heard of that, that right i think they mm-hmm. made one right they <laughs> there this thing um i actually when they asked me to do the job they were like it's in Boston. It's like two weeks. I was going to make like 12 grand easy. Yeah. Wilkes Bears in it. The purge? Yeah. It's one of the towns that gets purged. 
Are you serious? Yeah, actually, I, yeah, it is. <laughs> huh. It says we might have to go PA. back and look. I might have to. So you miss out on the purge. So not knowing the purge is going to be the purge. Well, I, I mean, I knew, I, I knew what it was going to be, and I was like, oh, this is great. And I was like, well, I'm back to work, but I have to. In full disclosure: I can do just about everything except if I'm like ratcheted into concrete. And they're like, it's literally the job. You're getting a shotgun blast to the stomach, and you're getting ratcheted to concrete. And I was okay. like, I. I'm going to respectfully decline. Yeah. It's the first time I ever had to turn down a job coming back to work. And then I got a call. Because you wanted to walk for the rest I of your did, life. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I thought walking would be, breathing yeah, would yeah. be cool. That might be good too. Mm-hmm. Breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And necessary. But I very almost, it might have been the same day or the, just the day after I got a call that uh, um, there was a part that I wanted to audition for a blind spot. And Again, I, I was like, oh, I don't know if I could, I don't know if this is like a stunt job or if this is just in my agent, you know, I had another agent at the time. Uh, so I did like a self tape uh, audition for Blind Spot. Um, is that when you like set up your camera and just flip? Uh, no, it was an acting part. It was. A, oh, really? It was like a speaking. Yeah. Oh. Yep. It All was right. a speaking part and uh, it was a bad guy. It was a two episode deal and they call that a two-episode My left part. ear is gone. That's okay. Huh? I'm mean, like Picasso. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Oh, it, it, it went away again. I don't care. I don't need to hear it in both ears. Oh, it's the thing down the bottom. It. it worked. It's the connector. Whatever you just... No, no, no. Right. Whatever just happened, fix it. Now you um, know how I'm an M felt in 8 Mile. What? Oh, God. Like, I got no snare <laughs> on my headphone. I thought you said an M, not M&M. I don't and know what an M is. An M. M&M. 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 And I can't do M's. I'm going to stop. Can you say C and Emony? Nope. Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> so you get offered, uh, you, so you get offered this gig. You know, for, uh, well, I didn't even get offered. I got an audition. And I was like, well, this is an acting part, at least whatever. So I set up my, you know, my laptop and I did my little audition. I sent it in thinking, and I do this all the time, like either for like a one liner or for a, a stunt part where they want to make sure you're not like in it. Even if there aren't lines, they'll give you something with lines and then. Usually cut money. them, but yeah. yeah, or or not even more money, but you can negotiate if you yep. want. But I don't know. I don't think I've ever really negotiated. The only thing I negotiated with this was just the extra ten percent from my agent or whatever fifteen. Right. And um, but I yeah I got pinned and then I got offered the part and it was for two episodes. It was playing a Russian redhead. What the, season's this? One. First season. season. One. First season. Okay. So episode nine and ten of the first season. And it was the, the role started off being just redhead, but then like you learn her name, Kate Williams, and she's a Russian spy basically. And, uh, the audition was in English. It was like with a Russian accent yeah. and I get the script and it's in Russian. Well, it says spoken in Russian. And so I immediately called like an ex of mine, I'm like, can you, who was Russian, can you teach me how to say this in Russian or tell me what it is in Russian? Cause yeah. I don't want to be phonetic. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just want to be prepared. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll tell me what to do eventually. But like days were going by, I was going to rehearsals cause there was a lot of fighting. It was a huge fight scene. Um, again, I told the fight coordinator, I'm like, I can do everything, but like, you know, get really thrown really hard on yeah. to my back or and whatever. Speak Russian. I was having a little nerve issue. Um, this was my first thing back and I was a, a little bit of issue with my neck and my, my left arm. But, uh, he was great. The fight coordinator was great in working around my issues. And then she gets dumped overboard, uh, into the Hudson river off of the intrepid, which is like so cool to work on the intrepid. Mm-hmm. For- I love it there. I've been to a fashion show for fashion week there. Wait, the, the fucking battleship or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. you got thrown off the intrepid. Well, here's the thing. I was all game for it. I had to think about it because I did just, you know, break my neck. Um, it's like 150 feet. It was uh, it was sick. I was so excited and then realized logistically I could not do it because I did. They colored my hair and the reset after being dumped in the river would have been a three hour reset and it, on the schedule for the day. I was in every single scene. So it went right from that to the chase, to the fight scene, to this, to that. There was just no time. They had, right. the, they had, we're racing the clock with light and, uh, so I had to get a stunt double <laughs> just, you know, you had just to get for one. that stunt. Just for that stunt. Really? Yeah. how that so feel? So it was weird. It. <laughs> so weird. But it was cool. I, like the girl was my friend. Didn't look anything like me, but they did her hair just like mine. Right. And all you you saw of her was, so that was not me flipping over the, the side of the Intrepid, although I wish it were. 
Mm-hmm. I wish it was. was you can still go back or? and just do it if you want. I was thinking maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just do it. Why Woo! Not? <clears throat> and it had to be done first thing in the morning because of tides and, and shit. So. Oh, no shit. Okay. So that's why like it just logistically would, like I, they couldn't just do it at the end of the day because right, the right. water would have not sure. been at a level where you could safely jump into it. But uh, it may have just, it may have saved my life. Who knows? Like I don't know. I could have <laughs> I would have I could have like flipped over and like hit my neck on the water and just died. But um, so you did your two episode arc, yeah. And you thought you were done. That's great. And then the lead stunt double ended up tearing her hamstring horribly, like off the bone. <sighs> and uh, they were looking for a replacement, and they were just having a tough time finding someone that was the the right height and body type. And I think they brought me in just for a rehearsal. And I knew that it was kind of like my audition without being an audition. Uh So I studied the fuck out of the show and both of their movements. And they're like, Oh, she kind of moves like Jamie and kind of like Kai, this is great. Not like realizing that, well, I did my fucking homework, you know, as you're Uh supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just wanted every advantage I could get and it ended up working out great. And they kept me on board, doubling her for the rest of the series. And so, I worked all the rest of the rest of the first season, the end of first season. What episode did you come in? Because you did nine ten. And then I didn't come back till I could be wrong, but I think eighteen or nineteen. And then oh, so they, they, they were they searching. did twenty three that that year too. Yeah, they kind of brought a person in here and a person in there, and they just weren't working out. And the other stunt double was still working until like she it, she and I were actually working together toward the end. And then the last like two episodes, I think at least. I had them on my own, but she kind of like phased herself out. And then she had her surgery, her first surgery, I should say. She's oh, had two. Terrible. I think she's having another one. She's freaking awesome though. Her name's Kai Furno. If you ever want to like follow her on Instagram, cause she's really, really cool. Like every day she's like, oh, I'm just out in the Australian outback with a bow and arrow going on. <laughs> she was on Naked and Afraid like a bunch. And that's man, me in my house every she's day. <laughs> naked. <laughs> yeah. And that's different. Uh, well, uh, why did I get this full length mirror? <laughs> uh, so how many seasons did you do on that? Uh, we're in our fifth season and I'm shooting until the very last episode uh, is done. November 20th. We wrap blind Seri- spot series or wrap or season wrap series. So season- and you and I talked about uh, the guy who created that show. Not Martin Garrow, the other the, his co-creator or no, Martin the Stargate Garrett. guy yeah yeah Mar- yeah the Stargate yeah. guy yeah yeah fucking he Martin Garrow he wrote Stargate Atlantis and the Stargate nice. dude Universe. he's the fucking coolest too he's just like you tell him I'm so a awesome. massive fan and my wife and I can't get enough <laughs> all right I'll just Stargate period I'll see if like if you have this portion of the podcast I'll please just have them bring it back somehow I don't care it's a great oh, dude, show the um the chick from Stargate that like cut her hair. Oh my God. I'm blanking. Which Amanda. One? Amanda. Oh yeah, yeah. Amanda. She was Dr. Uh, the blonde. Atlantis. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Dr. Name. Carter or Carter from SG one. Yeah. The Samantha the, Carter. Yeah. But what's her last name? Amanda. Oh, I've been on IMDb but, a thousand times. I know this too. Look it up. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to go crazy unless I oh, know. Oh, she's so good, man. She um she should run the government. <laughs> so she's first of all she's freaking hilarious. She's done Isn't like, she a director? Yes, yeah, she directed an episode of Blind Spot. Really? That I was privileged enough to I made to. a tapping. Tapping. Yes. Damn it. Damn it. She's so incredible. She's seriously just Teal'c incredibly is my talented. Incredibly talented as a performer, incredibly talented as a director. Just I, I I I was kind of I had a crush on her like from Stargate. I still do. I kind of still do too. But all right, I still do. But she, um, on set, I would just, you know, I always hang back or whatever. But would you ever like go to the edge of the stage and be like Carter? Yeah, I sh- <sighs> you know, if I was a little more comfortable, maybe the next time she's next on. Time. Next time, next time she directs, you should do next that. Next time, it doesn't matter what the show is either. But uh, you know, we. I had several opportunities to strike up a conversation with her on set, but just uh, I sat and fostered myself and just was like, <laughs> couldn't speak. Carter. But by the end, I, I was I was talking to her, and it you know came out that I was like doing my own first feature and all that kind of this kind of stuff. And she was like, "I want to see it. I want to see your movie." Well, I'm I like, "No, no, I wasn't. This. I wasn't." It, but the thing is, I wasn't like bringing up the thing because I wanted any. Like, I don't ever want people to think that I'm 
asking them for something. So did you notice that people from here are not looking for that when they when they're like, well, I'm working on this feature, and they're like, and the other person, you're like, I don't, I'm, I didn't say it, so you felt obligated to, to do something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was just letting you know, like, I baked a pot roast. And if I'm talking to a chef, it doesn't mean I want you to critique my right. pot roast. I'm not asking for it, but I'll welcome it. Yeah. You well, know, if you wanted. I didn't even, like, as soon as I said it, I'm like, oh, crap, she's going to think I'm, like, you're that, asking for, yeah. a, you know, asking for something. Right. Immediate, our first conversation. And I was like, sure. no, no, no. It's like, it's a little thing. I mean, it's big. Obviously, it's a big deal to me, but it's really, it's just like a little thing. I'm whatever, the hometown, yeah, you yeah. know, whatever. And then she was very insistent on, like, me getting in touch with her when I was done to show her the film so that that was really sweet because she could have been like oh okay and like moved on good for you yeah and then then like there were there were plenty of outs in that conversation where she could have (laughs) very easily even even on screen on the show and when you watch the behind the scenes shit you're like she seems like a genuine person yeah i think she's super comfortable with herself yeah like she and confident in like the best way yeah confident oh yeah i would just i would just i'd Fist to chin, just watching. Yeah, but she know. understands both sides too. Like she, she is an actor and knows how to talk to actors. When I worked and- on Sons of Anarchy, fucking Mario Van Peebles. Whenever that dude came in, we were like, "This is gonna be a six-hour day. It's mm. gonna be great. We're gonna go home." Yeah. Anytime, anytime, like an actor comes on the show and directs, it's always like out the door. I don't know, always, but at least with a her, a lot of the time. At least with her, on, in this case, because um, after I left, Peter Weller, RoboCop, amazing. started directing. Sons of Anarchies, and I was like, no Peter way. Weller? And they're like, quick. Cool. We love it. Yeah, because he All knows right. both sides. So, so how did we meet? Uh, Wasn't I a random Gmail, yeah. Google phone call? You Okay, so you were actually probably close to the top of the list in the beginning of, uh, well, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make a movie because I wanted to, I'm working toward, um, becoming As you more should, of a director. Man. It's the next. It's the next step. It's I've the next been logical coordinating. Step. I really. I've always wanted to direct. I've always directed. Um, I've directed theater a bunch, but in learning, in kind of this really weird roundabout way of you know backdoor way of doing the things that I love and doing stunts and then coordinating and working with coordinators, and then it just it it just came back to where I started and and um, I wanted to make a movie and I wanted to make it in the town that I grew up in and in Kingston, yeah. which is on your shirt that totally I gave you. Totally accidental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, happy accident. Um, so that's what my parents up, said about me. Because, oh, geez. <laughs> so where the, but where did this idea, first of all, to, to go down the road, I mean, Jesus Christ, Stacy and I know it's like, if the moment you commit to it, it's like you've committed. Oh mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah, know, well, so I mean, was, in anything really that I personally do, if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I 100% do it. But I don't half-ass anything, which is right. a blessing and a curse. Um, it sometimes gets me a little caught up, but it also Particular. results. It, yeah. But, but yeah, but I think it's for the best. So far, it has been. We just did a shoot where somebody put a goddamn sandwich in it, and it took. We had a oh, oh, the had sandwich a, gate. A seven oh. minute 4K fucking. Rotoscoping. rotoscope of a sandwich out of a shot i heard about it more oh no yeah it was an interview mm-hmm. oh really no. big company and i, was, I told somebody yeah. like I, three or four times i'm like get the fucking sandwich out of the shot and then no. we, we went to roll i thought it wasn't there and halfway through i sent stacy a text i'm like no. move that motherfucking sandwich out of that motherfucking shot so yeah, I had to do like six minutes of like hardcore rotoscope. And that's oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's like an hour a minute at least if you're doing it right. If it's just a sandwich, right? Oh no, a lot longer. No? longer? Yeah, it's, it's not a shape. Shit. It's a dude's coat and it keeps deforming. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to like go frame by frame. It sucks. But I did it and got it yep. done. Yep. But I don't know why I brought that up. What were you saying before? Oh, about <laughs> doing things the right way. And- yes. Not yes. half-assing it. Yes, yeah. but here's the thing: I'm always looking for a sandwich now. I want a sandwich. No, right looking now. through it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Know. So when you decided to do this, were you like, I can? Uh, I I thought I was just gonna use my camera and do like a little, like ten minute short right. and um, submit it to some festivals, get in, you know, pretty much. Like I know what I'm doing. Whatever. I've done a bunch of films. And then it before, mutated. And it totally mute. It like. Yeah, it mutated like Godzilla size. Um, <laughs> it was, 
I, I couldn't, well, the first thing was I couldn't really find a story that I felt passionate enough about to, th that was already written anyway, that either didn't take some adapt, like an adaptation of like a news story or something like that. Right. <clears throat> and I, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, about, and I, I even had like friends of mine who were playwrights. I'm like, will you help me write something? And they're like, yeah, but then didn't. And I'm like, well, I guess I have to write it. Um, but then I, I started talking to a friend of mine, um, and we were just in conversation talking about how he does Rocky horror. He plays Frankenfurter and he does, he dresses up in women's clothing. He's a straight dude. Um, and his girlfriend's super supportive. And I thought, you know, this is a really interesting story. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure like similar things have been talked about and whatever, but I don't really know if I know of a film or, a, or anything that I can put my finger on that really is this specific situation. Right. And, um, I felt it unique enough to write a short about, um, so problem is, is that it's, there, you can't so do it just as short. You can't. I mean, uh, you probably can, but it's be you, hard. It's not going to be as impactful. Right. The emotional payoff at the end is not going to be what you expect. Yeah, yeah. The, the story wouldn't have been as full and enriched as yeah, it yeah. became. Um, but my friend that, uh, Mike, who it ended up being about the story, was also a playwright. Um, neither of us were screenwriters. Right. I've read hundreds of scripts. I've worked on Blind Spot for you know now five seasons and read every single script, and um, understood how they worked and how you can kind of put humor into your script to so that you know those working on it can uh, you know get your your your. Um, the, the feeling you're sometimes, trying to sometimes it's the way to get them there what do you mean like especially in an emotional scene or something oh, okay. like dramatic like like a, a moment of humor or you know is the way to like get them across the finish line to understanding that's what i found that makes sense i mean yeah that's, where that's it's like that's what i try yeah it's do. almost like a button it's almost like this is this is dramatic and we don't know how to feel about this, but then something funny happens, which makes you laugh, which in turn subconsciously makes all of that okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I tried to to do and I think between Mike and I were good story. I mean, this I you know, I was driving back and forth to New York a lot and I would have like my little button on my phone. So like anytime I get an idea, I would like hit the Siri Siri take a note, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> and like I would just like rattle off things and I would come up with these ideas and then took all, I basically tried to cram like four years of screenwriting college and four years of, you know, directing into a two month period. And, but really like uh, when I go for something, I go like wholeheartedly into yeah, it yeah. and learned how to do like the beats and the breakdowns and all that kind of stuff. And I had Mike help me write this, this story based on loosely based on his life and experiences and pulled from other other people when i had the auditions for the movie started telling me their stories and i incorporated that into part of the scripts and <clears throat> it's turned into something way bigger and i mean maybe it's because my baby but i think you know i think it turned out to be something pretty spectacular and like a story that's just for, for those who don't know what does it take to do something like this uh <laughs> Think, think about like the hardest thing you've ever had, like the, the biggest party you've ever had to throw. Right. And then think about doing that a hundred times a minute Yep. for the next three months yep. and the preparation and the not sleeping. And once you think, once like the party's over, you realize you've thrown 10,000 parties and you have all this shit that you have to clean up now that everybody's gone and it's mm -hmm. just you. So, um, is that close? Here's, well, know. here's one of the amazing <laughs> things about, so you shot over how many pages was the script? 70, 70, mm -hmm. you shot over 70, 70, 70. pretty complex pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In six, in five days, five days. That's right. Mm -hmm. Cause the sixth day was just the club. And, a lot of people volunteered their time. Every single person. Mm -hmm. And not one person walked away. No, no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's, that is unheard of, but. But you got to think, but, but you got to really, you got to really let that rattle your head around a little bit. But. Because that's a testament to you. Forget the material. Yeah. 
Okay. I hope. I mean, I really do hope so because I think they. I think they. I think they. I think everybody. I mean, that, that, that's and that's the thing about what you wrote. I think. I think it's acceptable, accessible by everybody. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you think in life, I think what you wrote was accessible to everybody. That was the goal, without being too general. Because I not, think, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, because you can get too safe. I think. With things well, like yeah. you could like Mike's first outfit, you see him in the first five seconds of the movie, you're like, "All right, well, he's so, almost uh-huh. naked." But I, but I go. will, I will say this. Number one, I'm happy you're pursuing this as a, as a, as a career. No, 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 no. no. Bear, bear with me here. It's, it's that this is also a road that you're taking for your future. Because oh, okay. I don't know, I don't know where you stand on your day job. But I'm happy that this is this is where you're where you're heading. Yeah. Um, and that being said, anytime anybody does anything, and I have experience with definitely seeing my shit in front of an audience, not knowing how they're going to respond to it. When I went to that thing, the cast and crew, it was I never expected that. The 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 screening. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I was like, I was concerned about this beat. I was concerned about this moment. I was concerned about that. I was concerned about that. And I'm like, oh, they get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're getting all of it. It's well, resonating. I mean, and man, this is a cornucopia of people in this room. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Like yeah. people that mm-hmm. like, it could have gone real fast, gone real, real fast. Real, but there's something, there's something that has so much heart. There's so much in there that like, if you really sit on it for a bit, you'll, you'll cry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like later, it's not like in the moment. There's nothing there where it's like, oh, and then Ryan Gosling died, and you're like, no, there's <laughs> nothing like. What was that Blue Valley? I don't know. One of those yeah. movies. Or he dies Bind the Pines or whatever. Well, his face always looks like he's toast. Um, <laughs> I think he's a great actor, but he's he's just that he's got that oh. one move. Yeah. But nice he's guys so good was great. At you should it. watch that. Um, but I'll tell you, man, I'm really proud of you. Yes, Thanks. me too, very much. Well, you helped tremendously especially with the first edit of like fun about <laughs> no but, but like just like the rough edit of like a decent amount of scenes so it gave me like a platform to to start off to start I wish I, 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 I wish I could have done more but yeah life kind of happens and gets in the, <clears throat> that's the thing I too is I I totally understand the fact that people have like jobs in the field and I was grateful to get what I could get <clears throat> and I think at one point when I, I basically was calling everyone to find cameras, to find, this goes back to how we met. I just had a, a list that I went down. I, I'm just that, when, oh, I, no, I'm when, on I, a list. when I started stunts even, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start with the credits of movies. That's where I know how to start. Right. Got all the names and I just started, if I couldn't find their email address, I would Facebook message them. And like hundreds and hundreds of people and like 10 people responded, which... 10 people sounds like a lot of people when, but when you think I, you know, messaged hundreds of people, you're like, Oh, well a very small amount. But if I can get one response out of hundreds, that's, mm-hmm. that's it. Just need that door open a little bit and you I will bang it down. If you don't play. Yep. That's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Although don't gamble. Cause that could also ruin <laughs> your life. I'm not talking about gambling. I'm talking about lotteries, <sighs> you know, the stuff that pays for the elderly. Right. Cause we need them for anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's where the money goes. It does. I get benefit it. You got it. Older, Ameri- Pennsylvanians. older Pennsylvanians. Oh, wow. You just came back into my left ear. Yeah, oh. I yelled loud enough. <laughs> Broke through. Because I'm pretty close to being an older Pennsylvanian. <laughs> I think you... Are. I don't no, feel good you, about you it. So what's anyway, next? So, I, well, I'm just going to say that I had like a list and I just... I, I think either you were, you were on the top of the list and for some reason... I you don't know how you got skipped over, but you did. And I'm at the bottom of the list again. I'm like, let me just check through this list again. I'm like, oh wait, twenty. I got Stacy and Marky. The fuck kind of name is Marky for a grown man? But it's uh, a later podcast. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I then I, I just call. I think I called you. Well, Corey Burns got us Corey together. Burns. Yeah. And yeah. Then he, I convinced and I'm like, wait, him he's on my list. That's call. right. Corey Burns was like, gave me your names. I'm like, wait a minute, this is ringing a bell. And I yeah. look back and. And sure then enough. I forced him to have the phone call at his house that day. I remember in the backyard. That's right. And then we discovered you that me? you were in my yeah. brother. And I'm like, come what on, what was I saying house. before? You were just like, because oh, you always look at me when I'm like, um, I think it might be free work, but maybe not. And maybe just we should talk to them. <laughs> I was immediately was like, I don't have money. 
Are I know, still, but, hello? but y'all had that little connection with you giving her brother like a paycheck or something. Like, oh, yeah, your brother in law. My sister's yeah. house. You're like, I was in your sister's house. So then like, I was wait, like, what? this is going to go great. <laughs> yeah, but that's a weird. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is serendipity. Yes. And that's why I was like, oh, thank you, God. We can do it. We can help it. <laughs> <laughs> I gave your brother-in-law a paycheck once. Not yeah. for me. No, but still, you're in their house. <laughs> for an hour. Weird. Yeah. 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 Why, why did you want to do this? Yes, yeah, two dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were really two. nice. Big dogs. I think they were brown. I don't know why. One was brown. Yeah. One was black. Yeah. yeah. All mm-hmm. right. They were nice. Yeah. Why but, did you want to do an no, F word? Like, I just thought, like, because I saw the piece that Ryan Leckie had done with her. I mean- you know, and oh, I, oh, oh. I thought, you know, I was like, oh, she'd probably be really cool to work with. And if she's not, then we'll find out. <laughs> so, I think I think let's have a phone call. At I, least. Think, I think I said to you, I think I said, I think we have to do it because it's the only there's no better film school than going to fuck up something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and just being there fucking it up. And hopefully we don't. But anytime mm-hmm. something terrible, you know, happens, I think that's the thing that makes you a better filmmaker or oh, artist yeah. or whatever. You look at the mistake and you go, I know how to fix this now. That was like the coolest thing was having people like you and and you there that knew what you're doing as far as keeping things moving. Because honestly, like doing TV is like the best practice for getting shit done because you have to finish things. And I had to finish. So all of the, I think you were at least happy with the fact that I had prepped this as best as I possibly could. No, you did a lot. You were way, I think you wore way too many hats. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a good lesson for the future is to be like, look. Well, in this case, for free work. You didn't work, have a choice, man. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't have, you did yeah. not I was going to say. But being that you did that, what a great way to learn. Mm-hmm. Yes. And also. Because you know what it takes for anybody else to do it. Right. Just to speak in their language. You know what I mean? Like Which which puts you at an advantage to being able to talk to like a UPM or a, a line producer. But as much as I ND. did, I also understand the value and the importance of having people run departments. And although yeah, I did a lot of prep and wore a lot of hats in the beginning, I took my hat off and gave it to people. And I was like, this is yours now. Mm-hmm. Because on the day, I'm not going to be able to, to deal with props. I'm not going to be able to deal with hair and makeup. I'm going to need you. But finding the people that... <clears throat> had zero experience but had like the will and the drive to be there for 18 hours and yeah and i would tell them keep people. Like, i'm like dude don't be afraid to fuck up don't be afraid to make the mistake right just take pictures of everything that's yeah. all i ask so we can cover <laughs> ass, yes. you know and you're gonna get the best education you can for for no money mm-hmm. yeah. like this you're not making anything this is worth this much totally yes and even for people that were volunteering that had never done anything like this before, That's my even point. if they don't do this specific thing in the future, they'll. I've already had. I don't think there's a person that that worked on this who hasn't said, you know, that really helped me prepare for this or meet this person Absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely, so, that should be. Or something that's the people best food do. I ever had. <laughs> you know, what? Serious. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So, what's next for you? I have to pee. Um, <laughs> After immediately, that. Immediately, but. Yeah. Let's forget the immediate future. Uh, Let's, uh, finishing out the uh, last bit of post in this film, I'm already kind of thinking about what I want to do next in that realm. Finishing Blind Spot by the end of uh, November, I'm working uh, uh, at home with Amy Sedaris. I'm coordinating her show again until February. Um, by the way, Blind Spot was also nominated again for stunts for the Emmys Woo-hoo. this year. So, uh, they should make it an Oscar category. Yeah, that's a thing. Stand up for stunts. I'll help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have no problem. Oh, we should put that should. in the in the description. Stand up yeah. for stunts. Hashtag. Hashtag stand up for stunts. Yeah. Yep. Hashtag. That's a thing. Um, are we going to see more of you soon? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I'm going to probably need your help to finish the You final really edit. are sunshine in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> You're sunshine oh. in a dark hallway. No. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Your nuclear fusion. Woo! Oh, that's cool. I'll take it. Love it. Super I'm very normal. happy to have met you. I feel honored that you're in my life. Stacy doesn't like you too much. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I went over her house for dinner the other day. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't invited. No, nope. I was not invited. invited. There's a lot of done it. <laughs> no, I had something playing with my wife, and Stacy's like, I'm going to Heidi's. I'm like, do I have to go? And she's oh like, God. no. And I'm like, all right, I got to go deal with my wife. You can always <laughs> come to my house. I got to bring my wife. With your wife. She'd probably have a good time. Yeah, and now, mm-hmm. yeah, now I'm gonna have a dining room table and everything. Oh my god, great! I've made it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I've yeah. made it. Beautiful. I got oak. 
Beautiful. Yeah. No, no, not oak. Hey, will you tell uh, uh, your buddy over at Blind Spot that I'm a big, big fan? Yes. <laughs> All right. Not like the way you'd be in a with the playbill in line. I could. I would right. actually no, no, probably no. meet him and go. It's a real pleasure. I'm a, I'm a, I'm You'd think you would, but you never know. I think we should. I think we should maybe set up the meet and film it and see what oh happens. Boy. Like He'll you just cry. have your iPhone in the bag. Like this I'll is my buddy. Cry. And I'm Dude. like. And I'm like, are we on a, a road that's bumpy? I don't know. You've changed a lot oh for me. God. Stargate Universe was brilliant. Oh, my God. It was okay. the seeds oh of Battlestar can Galactica. Just, I could see it. Can you just tell Sutton Foster I think she's awesome and high five or something? We don't have to get into the dramatics. This is great because I can but. just literally like take <laughs> clips from this and show them. Hi, I love you. <laughs> It's great. Like, I'm not acting the, like him. Oh my I'm, god! I'm, I'm trying to be the cool fan. Okay, right. be the, cool now. Just like cool. You know? High five, man. It's easy to be cool here. If my dad was <laughs> Bill you. Gates and he gave me a hundred million dollars, the first thing I would do is cons- is continue Star Stargate Universe. That was that's the first thing I would do. That's. Maybe Range. the second thing I would do. The first thing is I would invest it in some. Oh, that's, it was going. This is why you weren't invited. Now. There was only two seasons. There was only two seasons, and I refused to watch the last episode of the second season because I know it got canceled. So I don't want to. Yep. You I still have not know. watched the oh. last episode of mm. Stargate Universe. Mm. That's sad. So. All right then. All right. <laughs> no. Let's go pee. Okay. Thanks Yay. for being here, kid. Love you. <laughs>